All right, are we live? I think we are up and live. Good to go. Great. Thank you. Welcome everyone to this, the uh, tonight's planning meeting. Uh, welcome to everyone joining us on live YouTube and those of you wanting to watch after, uh, get yourself settled. We have a, a full agenda ahead for tonight. And before we get started and open the meeting, I'm just going to introduce the council as well. We have Councillor Link uh, from Ward Mary, 1 joining us. You're cutting out. out. Councillor Buschetti from Ward 2. Okay. Um, I'm going to deal with that, but can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Give a nod if everybody can hear me okay. Great. All right. Councillor Link from Ward like 1. We have Councillor Buschetti from Ward 2. Councillor Kleiber from. My, my screen is a bit off from it. Okay. All right. Everybody able to hear me? Councillor Prague from Ward 4 and Councillor Kleiber from Ward 3. Great. Thank you. We've got Mr. Patton here, our planner from Red River Planning, guiding us through this evening, and our CAO and administration joining us, as well as those of you joining us as part of our meeting for planning items. I'm going to open the meeting with our resolution. Be it resolved that the meeting be called to order and that the agenda for the meeting be adopted as circulated. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded by Councillor Buschetti. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. All right, um, I'm going to, we have no uh, addendums for the meeting additions tonight. We have a full enough meeting, and I'm gonna read the invocation before we get started. Councillor Link, you've got your hand up, go ahead. Yes, I thought we were going to approve the 2021 schedule of council meetings tonight and the holiday closures, and I don't see those on the agenda. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I believe we're going to have to. Yep. Uh, those Go ahead. Two resolutions are scheduled for November 26. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions regarding the agenda? All right. I'm going to read the invitation then before we get started with the planning portion of our meeting. Please bow your heads. Please grant the Council of West St. Paul the wisdom and leadership in guiding our community for the future. We ask for support in fostering an environment that promotes understanding of good governance and respect on the issues that we are undertaking in our roles as municipal leaders. Our goal is to grow and be successful as a community and individuals. Amen. All right. Before we um, get on to the planning items for this evening, uh, I just want to read a brief introduction. Uh, we are aware that most people who attend, or in this case view, uh, council meetings for planning matters like the ones here tonight are not completely familiar with how the planning process works. So I want to spend a few minutes providing additional context so that we all have a better understanding of the process and requirements around the Manitoba Planning Act and our local bylaws. Any person can apply for a variance, conditional use, rezoning, subdivision as per the Municipal Act. By making the application with West St. Paul's Planning Authority, the Red River Planning District, this does not mean that council has endorsed the planning from the applicant and from those representatives who attend the public hearing to speak either in opposition or to the same information at the same time as those who are in attendance here today. There are procedures council uh, members must follow once the application. Oh, why are you losing me on sound? Sorry, guys. Okay. Uh, there are procedures council members must follow once an application is officially filed with the Red River Planning District, and until such time as a decision is made, council members cannot speak with the applicant or any other person who may seek information or wants to speak in support opposition of an open application. This guards against anyone influencing council members before a public hearing. Often residents are frustrated by not having the opportunity to speak to their elected officials once an application has been filed, but this is done um, for reasons to ensure that there is proper process. Red River Planning District staff can answer any questions at any time. 
The Red River Planning District accepts applications from residents and developers who want to build houses, sheds, swimming pools, garages, and from those who want to subdivide their land from one lot splits to larger subdivisions. Red River Planning District staff are professional planners recognized by professional association and are tasked with researching every application. Their work and recommendations to council are made based on legal framework, not personal opinions. They review each application against the Manitoba Planning Act, our development plan, our zoning bylaw, and they also circulate the application to many other organizations that may be impacted, such as Manitoba Infrastructure, Public School Finance Board, Sustainable Development, Gas Hydro, adjacent municipalities, the City of Winnipeg, to name a few. Red River Planning staff does all of this to determine if the application meets legal requirements. At public hearings, council hears from many delegations and we will ultimately decide if the application is a good fit for our community and if it will be approved. We consider both the legal requirements the planner has researched as well as feedback from our community. I also wanna just briefly discuss the process and conduct of hearings tonight. To begin a public hearing, there's a resolution read to open the public hearing. Our planner begins by presenting information from his report as well as his recommendations to council. Council members can then ask questions for clarification through the chair. We will then hear from the applicant followed by those who have registered to speak in support, those who are opposed and those who are asking for information. At this, at the end of the presentation, the applicant will have an opportunity to respond. At that time, no new information can be presented. Council members will have the opportunity to ask questions for clarification of the applicant or anyone registered to speak on the planning items. All questions must be made through the chair as per our procedural bylaw. Um, so I thank everybody for taking the time to participate and, and attend today uh, as applicants, as well as those wanting to speak up in support, opposition, or for information. I ask that everybody mute if, um, if it's not your opportunity to speak um, and, and to be respectful and not interrupt as we keep going through the uh, public hearings for this evening. So thank you all. So our first planning item for this evening, 5.1, I will open the public hearing for variance 10720. Be it resolved that this meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 96A of the Planning Act. Can I get a move or two? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded by Councillor Buchetti. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, carried. Thank you. I will turn it over to you, Mr. Planner. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So the first variance application before you tonight is variance number 107 of 2020. Uh, this is at 1201 Grassmere Road, and there are three variances that are required in order to permit the existing and proposed signage on this property. Um, which is zoned M1 Rural Industrial. So I'll just quickly uh, run through those three variances uh, that Council will be considering this evening. So the first is to increase the maximum permitted number of freestanding signs on the property. The bylaw allows one. Uh, there are currently three freestanding signs. Uh, the second is to increase the maximum combined area of business signage. Uh, and the third is to increase the maximum combined area of real estate signage. And I will go through um, each one of these in, in a little bit more detail. So as you can see, the, the property, 12-1 Grassmere Road, it's at the uh, north uh, west corner of the intersection of Grassmere and McPhillips. Uh, looking a little closer, you can see it's been developed with four, uh, four buildings. There's actually a fifth that's, uh, that's substantially completed on the property. Um, in terms of uh, what the applicants shown on their uh, site plan, uh, the existing buildings, as well as that fifth building that's, uh, as I mentioned, substantially completed, um, are shown. And then the relevant uh, information about signage is at the bottom right corner of the screen uh, shows the general location of those freestanding signs that I mentioned earlier. Again, I will uh, show some photos of that in, in just a moment. So the first uh, variance, that is, uh, variance that I want to speak to is the increase in business signage. Uh, so the maximum permitted um, square footage uh, combined area for business signage is 32 square feet under your current bylaw. Uh, now, as you can see, these are the four existing buildings on the property. Each one of them has been uh, developed with six um, building face signs uh, on the front of, uh, of the buildings. Each one of these signs is three feet by 12 feet, um, so 36 square feet. And again, there are um, uh, 24 of these signs in total, uh, six on each of the uh, four buildings. 
Um, so that gives a, a combined area of 864 square feet. Uh, so again, the bylaw only allows 32 square feet. Um, this is 860 square feet with just the building face signs that are, uh, that are existing. So in addition to these existing signs, uh, business signs, there is a proposed business sign for the fifth uh, building that's been uh, substantially completed. Uh, again, this would be a business sign um, that features the, uh, the proposed name and logo. Uh, and this is just over 67 uh, square feet. Uh, and again, these are all business signs. So business signs are defined as directing attention to a business, commodity, service, or entertainment conducted, sold, or offered on site. So that calculation uh, includes those, uh, those building face signs uh, that are shown, both proposed and existing. Uh, and it also includes uh, these two freestanding business signs that are on the property, um, uh businesses that are operating uh, from the property. So, uh, one of these signs of the uh, rustling construction is 32 square feet. The other, uh, the clean line is 60 uh, square feet. So. Um, all the uh, business signage on the property, both existing and proposed, and both freestanding um, and uh, building face, um, is a total of 1,023.34 square feet. So this application is to increase uh, the permitted um, area of business signage on the property from 32 square feet to 1,023.34 square feet. And I just want to point out quickly that there is also a mobile sign on the, on the property. Um, that's not included in, in the business sign area. Uh, it is permitted, uh, um, one business sign uh, at least is permitted per, uh, per property. So, uh, sorry, one mobile sign. So that mobile sign, uh, I, I won't be going into any discussion about it. None of the variances are uh, uh, involved the mobile sign. So that's the, the first uh, variance is for uh, business uh, sign area. Uh, the second is for real estate sign area. Uh, and as you can see, there is uh, the one uh, real estate signage that uh, this application is for. Uh, it's a freestanding sign that is four by eight feet. Uh, so it's 32 square feet in sign. Uh, the zoning bylaw states that real estate signs are exempt from requiring permits. However, they do uh, still need to comply with the applicable regulations of the zoning bylaw. And there's actually a maximum of 16 square feet for real estate signage on any given property. So. The sign is 32 square feet, double what is permitted. And so a variance is, is required uh, in order to permit this existing sign to remain. So that's the second, uh, the second variance is, that's required is to increase the maximum combined area of business, uh, rather real estate signage. The uh, third and final variance um, being considered this evening is to allow uh, three freestanding signs um, increased from the uh, one permitted under the uh, the current bylaw uh, requirements. So freestanding signs, as you can see, these are signs that I've already uh, mentioned. There's two business signs and one real estate sign. Um, uh, in addition to a maximum combined area for those different types of signs, there's also a maximum uh, number of freestanding signs. So it, that's one. And there are, as you can see, three uh, business signs that are being uh, applied for, and these are all uh, existing. So those are the three variances before council. Um, they are, uh, in some cases, some pretty substantial increases to what the bylaw currently permits. But I do want to just point out to council that um, given the size of the property, the number of tenants that are operating from the property, the number of buildings that have been developed, uh, as well as the proximity to major transportation uh, corridors, uh, these are all factors that council uh, uh, can consider um, when deciding on, on this variance. Since the uh, report was written, uh, Manitoba Infrastructure uh, did submit comments to our office. They simply noted that uh, all signage must conform to their uh, design and location standards, and the permits would be required for any signage uh, within uh, the controlled area uh, adjacent to the highway, which is, uh, encompasses the um, um, majority of the property. Uh, so with all that being said, uh, should council uh, approve this application? our office uh, recommends the following conditions. One, that the variance is limited to increase the maximum permitted uh, number of freestanding signs, the combined area of business signage, and the combined area of real estate signage as proposed within this application. And second, that the applicant obtains all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to those from the RRPD and Manitoba uh, infrastructure. That's all I have for this application, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Planner. I'm going to go around and see if council has any questions for you. 
Councillor Link, any questions for the planner on this application? Uh, no, I don't have any questions for the planner. Um, I, I do want just to say that all businesses should be able to have a sign to show that they occupy a part of a building. Um, and it is good to see that compliance for signage is being addressed because nine years is a long time to go by without having any compliance about the signing. So that's good. Councillor Link, Councillor Buschetti, any questions for the planner? No, no questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for the planner? Yes, yeah, so Mr. Patton, um, under the M1 use, um, what a business is only allowed one sign. That's what you're saying. One building is allowed one sign. Now, we obviously have multiple units in all of these um, buildings. Your office would have seen that when the uh, building permit came forward. Um, so let me ask you a question. Obviously, our bylaw hasn't changed and isn't representing what's currently going on in our community because there are other buildings on capitalist that would be commercial highway are they only allowed one sign as well they have multiple units in there as well is that the current zoning there as well um, and one m1 and m2 so just to, um, to clarify the uh, the permitted signage isn't per business it's it's per property um, so that's part of the reason I think why the uh, the current uh, uh, regulations are inadequate in this case. Yeah, uh, because there are so many businesses operating from them. Um, so the the bylaw as written, I guess you could say, doesn't consider that there would be more than one uh, business operating from the property. Um, so it's just that maximum square footage that we're dealing with. Uh, so that's then, something that we should probably change when a building has multiple units that maybe we should add that in our bylaw and change it so that if multiple units are in one building, that they're allowed multiple signs. Uh, do other RMs have that kind of zoning in place currently where there, where there is a multiple unit building or, or a range of, like, I mean, we have four buildings on that property, right? So we have multiple units. Do other RMs have that zoning in place right now? Without speaking in detail about any other RM regulations, certainly there are other RMs that uh, that uh, consider um, the number of businesses that operate uh, when determining the amount of signs that's permitted or the square footage uh, of permitted signage. Um, okay. So that's, that's definitely something that could be considered in in a in a zoning bylaw amendment. In other words, we need an upgrade to kind of capture some of the building that's going on in our community. Uh, I think it would be a reasonable uh, consider uh, reasonable consideration to look at uh, the existing sign standards uh, because it again I, I would say it's pretty clear that they're not intended for situations like this where you have multi uh, tenant. Uh, yeah, um, and we and we have that also in M1 and and M2 in the industrial park. We have it on Capitalist, and now that we're allowing this kind of building to go on, it sounds like we need an upgrade, and uh, I think that's that's what you're telling me. As far as the uh, three freestanding signs, um, they're only allowed one is what you're saying, correct? But if they have a mobile one, they can have more, they could have multiple mobile signs, right? They could, in this case, they could have two mobile signs on the property, um, given that they have more than one tenant. So the way the, uh, the bylaws are written is that mobile signage, um, per property, you're permitted one freestanding and one mobile sign, uh, unless you in which case okay i'll have some questions so, for you uh, on the signs but uh thank you for answering my questions thank you and councillor Craig, any questions for the planner yeah i know the buildings are inside um on grass mirrors looking at those buildings on the highway there it's a little inside and looking at these signs there that's to me that's the only way for them to know that that building is uh that company is located in there and they have their little signs on top and looking at the, the signs they're in very good condition it's not like 
bat your eyes or anything and I I see where the applicant what he wants to do and it's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Craig. Um, the only question that I have um, for you, Mr. Patton, in terms of a follow-up on our zoning bylaw, um, Mr. Eno, um, the head planner over there at Red River Planning, I understand um, we just recently approved for him to be working on all of our bylaws. Is he still working on upgrading every uh, Red River Planning District member's bylaws right now in light of Bill 37? Um, so he is. I, I'm asking if he's still working on that. Yes, so that's a project our office is undertaking is, is a review of all the, the um, six zoning bylaws in effect in the district. Okay. So that might be something that we can forward on to him regarding um, signage and looking at that with the bylaw. And I just wondered if, uh, if this was a large size sign and all of the different businesses were on one sign, I think that's what's happening on Capitalist, then that would be acceptable. But because they're, they're different, there's multiple signs on the different build on each building, that's the issue the um if it was all on one freestanding sign for example um it would still need a variance for for sign area if not number of signs so there's a few different regulations here that uh, that need to be varied um so the putting them all in one sign would would uh, address the uh, the number of freestanding signs but it probably would still require a variance for a sign area All right, we now, uh, we've heard from the planner. I will go to the applicant. The applicant is with us here this evening. Miss Elias, have we got the applicant Hi. with us? Yeah, I wanted to, yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Is there anything that you'd like to add? Yeah, one of the signs. I would like to come mind the signs and I want them uh, you're frozen Mr. Holobowitz as he looking at Mr. Holobowitz we're going to have to have you repeat yourself because you're freezing up on us and we can't hear you this I would I would sorry sorry that's okay. Let's see if we can hear you now. Try again. My connection is not very My good. Not very good. The sign is coming. The to... is coming to... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? We can. Yes. Try again. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me now? We can hear okay. you now. Sometimes. Yeah. Uh, sometimes clean line sign is coming, coming, coming down in a couple months. Up. That's not an issue. Okay. Go ahead. Yep, clean line sign is coming down, and my sign for rental there, we can I can make a better sign, and I, and I can just bring the signs to council and uh, whatever we're gonna have for future signs in the in the corner. I'm gonna ask you just to turn your camera off uh, because I'm thinking that that's sometimes that creates an issue because we keep having you kick out and now we can't hear you now. And it looks like we might have lost your sound. Nope, now we can see you, but we can't hear you at all. Oh, the joys of technology. Oh, there we go. Okay. Can, I heard that. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Oh, I barely hear. Yeah, like I said, I'm not sure if you heard that, but Clean Line is moving, so that sign is coming down in a couple months. And my rental sign and uh, the other roofing sign, uh, metal roofing sign, we want to make it a little better. The whole corner, I want to make it look a little better this year. And if we have to combine signs, we can come up with something. And whatever whatever everybody look, thinks it looks better, I, I want the place to look really good. Okay. Okay. Around and see if uh, council has any questions for you. Councilor Bruschetti, any questions for the applicant? No, no questions. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for the applicant? Actually, I was going to ask you about that clean line sign because I know they moved on Capitalist, right? Um, 
their leases, well, they're they're moving. So that clean line sign is gone. I applied for the clean line sign just to make everything uh, so we, it's there. So I had to address it. Uh, the metal roofing sign. I could see how the my sign actually was there temporary for the last 18 years. It's like I want to make a better sign anyway, or do something else. So yeah, there's the signage in the front. We can uh, work on whatever you want. But the building signage is what uh, is um, is what I'm in concerned about because every business should have their own sign, and so they know who's in there. Yeah, a sign in the front uh, would be a um, uh, a good one for to amalgamate all the signage, and that's something that we can work on. Yeah, you know the you know. But the there's sign- not that many people actually that want signage in the front because as you can see, clean line and the metal roofing person and myself is only people that have signage there. Oh, and I think there's um, you probably can't see it. There is one more. There is one more sign. Uh, take us for granted, and that's yeah. Yeah, take us for granted is mobile. Look good. Take us for granted is a mobile sign though, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's why you don't have to have a variance for it. Okay, um, I thought I thought a leasing sign you didn't have to have a variance as well, but I have no problem with doing whatever I have to do. Okay, so you know what they're talking about when they say uh, a sign with multiple businesses on it. Yeah. You know, yeah. If you go across the street there and see AWC. Yeah, I have, I have no. Yeah, we we can work on a sign like that as long as yeah. the highways department didn't want to sign right on the highways like that before, and I did get approval once. That was quite a while ago. And well, it's, um, up, it's up to you, right? It's your business, and yeah. nobody's forcing you to do that. But it, it might be good advertising for those businesses, and some of oh, those. Yeah. And I can, and I can talk to the businesses as well. Yeah, yeah I can talk to the businesses. businesses and, might not wait, want it, so something you have to think about. You're worried. They're worried about because there's so many uh, different bays in there that um, to try to squeeze all of them in one sign. And yeah, yeah. The lights and hydro. Hydro's worried about it because of the sign. Something ever happened that a storm hit. But so we can, yeah, we can discuss the corner sign. Whatever, whatever yeah. we do, whatever oh, right is going to look good. And yeah. So right now, I, we're just I like to make the complex look really good. Yeah. But now we're just worried about the three. So I, I have to echo uh, Councillor Perag. I, I yeah, don't really have again. a big problem with uh, these signs. Really so you know. Uh, I think you just, the thing is you have to apply every time. I for can't hear nobody. We can hear you. <laughs> we can hear you, Mr. Holbowich. <laughs> so Mr. Patton, I guess he has to apply. Every time he puts a sign up, he has to apply for a variance on that sign. Yes. I didn't get nothing. Um, changing the copy of a, of a sign. Uh, for example, those building face signs, if, if a business changed over and, and a different sign was put in, that, that wouldn't require a new application. Um, oh, so he just gets like a maximum three, and if he changes the signs out, it's okay. If he changes the copy, now if he change, if you were to replace one of these signs in the photo before you um, with a sign, uh, let's say a different size sign, uh, that would need to come back um, for for new approval. So, for example, if you were to combine those into one sign, like uh, like is being discussed, uh, that would be something that would have to come back for uh, to council uh, for approval through variance under the current regulations. So if he has uh, this, if he removes a clean line sign, but puts another sign of equal size up, say for somebody else, um, he wouldn't need a variance for that, correct? If it's in the same, basically if it's in the same spot, same dimensions, yeah. uh, then it wouldn't, uh, if it's just a changing, basically the wood panel there, uh, yeah. then uh, doesn't need anything. from a zoning perspective, you wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't want, I would need to check with the building services department to see if there's building code concerns. Uh, for that, but uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Councillor Craig, any questions for the applicant? No, I have no questions for the applicant, but I would just want to thank him for working together with Councillor. And I very much appreciate that, sir. Yeah, no problem. I, I hope by this time next year, everything is resolved and everything looks like a million dollars in the complex. Thank you very much. I much appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor Perrag. Councillor Link, any questions for the applicant? No questions, um, but I would like to say the same as uh, Councillor Perrag. Good for you for wanting to improve the appearance of your complex and uh, everything will be good in the, in the next year. Great. Yeah. 
I have no questions for you uh, as well. I want to thank you for coming forward and, and bringing this application to the council. And I don't blame you for wanting lots of signage on your building and to have your uh, businesses that are in there to be visible. We, uh, we want to support businesses in West St. Paul and you can't, you can't use the business if you can't see the, where the business is. So uh, I commend you for coming in and, and bringing this forward to us. Thank you very much. All right, now I'm going to see if we have uh, anybody registered uh, in, in support, opposition, or for information. Ms. Elias? Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have Norm Yetman registered for information. He's not with us uh, this evening, but he said he is available by phone if Council has any questions for him. We also have Ben McGilvery registered for information. Thank you. With and with nobody on the phone, then for this, is there anything else, uh, Mr. Halaboch, that you would like to add then before we uh, close the public hearing? No, I'm. It's all good for me. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the help that uh, uh, South Creek and West St. Paul is doing for the complex, and I just want to make everything right. Wonderful. We're excited. We want to see that too. All right. I'm going to close the public hearing. We'll discuss and make a decision on this matter. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Perag, seconded by Councillor Buschetti. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. I will read the resolution. Whereas an application for variance 10720 was received for the property located at 1201 Grassmere Road to allow existing and proposed signage on the subject property in the M1 Rural Industrial Zone. From one freestanding sign max, 32 square feet combined business sign area max, and 16 square feet combined real estate sign area max, to three freestanding signs max, 1223, sorry, 1,023.34 square feet combined business sign area max, and 32 square, square feet combined real estate sign area max. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representations both for and against the application. Therefore, be it resolved that after careful consideration, Council of the RM of West St. Paul hereby approves Variation Order 10720 with the following conditions. One, this variance is limited to increase the maximum permitted number of freestanding signs, combined area of business signage, and combined area of real estate signage as proposed within the application. Any changes and or replacement may require a new variance approval. And two, applicant owner obtains all required, required permits from Red River Planning, including but not limited to those from Red River Planning District and Manitoba Infrastructure. A variance order will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted on upon within 12 months of the date of decision. A board, council, or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection one, for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Perag, seconded by Councillor Buschetti. Any discussion on this matter beyond what we've discussed? Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. So, um, Mayor Christian, I heard you say that that might be something that we could discuss with Mr. Eno, and we'll, who would be forwarding our suggestion to him or how would that go mr planner i think that you would be able to forward that on absolutely i can make a note of that and, uh, and speak to mr Eno uh, about it tomorrow perfect thank you and and just to let council know when that draft document comes to council we'll be reviewing that so it's making updates uh, in light of bill 37 and trying to show consistencies in the region across the planning district. So a lot of changes are going to be made to that zoning bylaw um, so that we are consistent with our neighbors and have some commonality uh, and to prepare ourselves for bill 37. So we'll all have an opportunity to look at that, make note council. Um, if, if we don't see that in there, that that's something to, uh, to include. Thank you for bringing that up, Councillor Kleiber. Any other comments uh, for discussion on this item? My only comment is I think that's great. We want our businesses to be visible and uh, I'm glad he's bringing this signage forward to council for approval. Hearing and seeing no further comments and discussion, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. All right, we move on to the next 5.2, public hearing for another variation. 
be it resolved that the meet this meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 96a of the planning act can i have a mover please moved by councillor Kleiber, seconded by councillor Bragg. any discussion hearing and seeing none i will call for the question all those in favor opposed carried thank you mr planner i will turn it back over to you Madam Mayor, so the next variance application is 116 of 2020. This is to allow for a detached garage to be constructed at 630 Grassmere Road. Uh, the effective zoning is RRO, Rural Residential Overlay. Uh, and the two variances that are required are, are first to reduce the minimum required west side yard uh, from five feet to two feet. That's measured to the building wall. So uh, just to note that the ease will project a further one foot towards the property line. Uh, and the second variance required is to reduce the minimum uh, separation distances uh, between two detached accessory buildings. Currently, the zoning bylaw requires three feet measured eave to eave. Uh, the applicant is proposing 1.5 feet uh, of separation uh, from eave to eave. As you can see, the subject property is uh, located on the south side of Grassmere Road to the west of, uh, of Main Street and the tracks. Uh, we take a bit of a closer that the uh, the property actually straddles uh, the uh, Grassmere Creek drain. Uh, it's about two acres in total, uh, with about a, uh, approximately one acre on either side of the drain. If you look at the zoning, you can see the zoning is also different um, depending on what side of the uh, the drain uh, we're looking at. Now, for the purposes of this application, um, the uh, the effective zoning is RRO. Uh, it's uh, we're only looking at the portion of the property to the north of the drain. That's where the existing structures are as well as uh, where the proposed garage is being, uh, would be constructed. If we take a look at the applicant's site plan, you can see the, uh, the location of the proposed garage. This is a uh, 748 square foot uh, garage, 34 feet by 22 uh, feet. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's located to the side of the uh, existing garage, which is 41 feet by 18 feet. Again, the, uh, the separation distances uh, between the two uh, buildings would be one and a half uh, feet eve to eve, and the setback from the property line measured to the building wall uh, would be two feet. It has submitted uh, building plans uh, just to counsel an idea of what the garage would look like. Um, again, it's 34 feet um, by 22 feet. <clears throat> and I just want to make a couple notes about uh, about this. So although it's closer to the property line than what uh, is typically permitted in the zone, um, it's also uh, a smaller garage than the maximum that would be permitted in that zone. So the bylaw allows for up to 1,200 square feet per, uh, per accessory structure. This is, again, 748 square feet. Um, the bylaw also allows for a height of 15 feet. Uh, as you can see by the drawing before you, it's a... Uh, it's approximately 11 feet in height, the uh, proposed garages. So uh, the garage is closer to the property line than would uh, be permitted, um, hence why a variance is required, but council should note that it is smaller in both height and area than, uh, than what is uh, permitted in that zone. Uh, the applicants provided uh, several photos showing the, uh, the location of the proposed garage on the property. Um, one of the things that council is going to have to consider is, is um, the uh, effects on adjacent properties. To that end, uh, the applicants provided a letter of support from the adjacent property owner uh, to the west. Um, that's at 638 Grassmere Road. So that's the property that would be um, uh, immediately to the west, uh, adjacent to where the proposed variance for a side yard is being applied for. So they are the owner that would be uh, most greatly affected by the location of the garage. And again. Uh, the applicants provided a letter of support from uh, from them. I also want to note that uh, because of the proximity of the garage to the creek, um, uh, a requirement for the building permit uh, would be that the applicant provide a geotechnical engineering report, uh, and they have actually already had one completed. Um, so um, my final note here is that uh, Red River Planning District uh, Building Services have um, Taking a look at this application and noted that there are uh, no concerns from a building code perspective. Uh, they're going to look at it in more detail, of course, when a building permit application is, is applied for. Um, but at this stage, they have uh, no concerns with the uh, with the proposed separation distance. And finally, these are some photos that uh, um, showing the property 
uh, earlier this week uh, from Grassmere Road, the first uh, photo on the top, uh, you can see the existing garage, the proposed garage would be just to the right of that, um, looking from Grassmere Road. And the bottom uh, image is looking, again, from Grassmere Road through the neighboring property towards the site of the proposed garage. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of, uh, of existing vegetation there that would um, uh, screen the, uh, the proposed garage to some extent. Council approve this application. Our office recommends the following conditions. First, that the variance is to reduce the minimum required west side yard and the minimum required separation distance uh, in order to allow for construction of a detached uh, garage as proposed. Any changes may require a new variance approval. And second, that the applicant obtains all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to those from the RRPD and the RM. Uh, that's all I have for this application, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Planner. We'll go around council table here, the virtual table, and see if there are any questions for you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for the planner on this matter? No, for the planner, I, I really don't have any questions at this time. Great, thank you. Councillor Craig, any questions for the planner? No questions for the planner, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Link, any questions for the planner? Yes. Uh, the first question, uh, there's nothing, uh, uh, the building code is okay with this garage, you say, but is there a fire code regarding separation distances between these buildings? My concern is this existing uh, wooden building is 56 years old now, um, and um risky business it'll it'll be good and dry and <laughs> ready to go if anything happened um so that's the first question is there fire code uh regarding separation distances between accessory buildings so my understanding my understanding uh, from speaking to our building services department is that there is no separation distance requirement under building code uh, for detached residential accessory structures. Um, so it's a bit of an anomaly, I guess you could say, in the code in that if you had a, an attached garage, say, adjacent to a home, um, you would have to have fire separation. Um, uh, but if it's, it's detached, uh, but directly adjacent to it, uh, it wouldn't require those same um, sort of uh, 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 fire distance uh, requirements. So, um, the short answer to your question is that there aren't any any building code uh, um, or fire code requirements uh, for residential accessory structures in, in close proximity to each other. Uh, now, again, our building services department will look at a building permit application in, in detail to see if there are any issues, for example, with the placement of the uh, of the, the, the door uh, or the window on this garage. Um, but in uh, just generally speaking, there aren't any building code concerns, uh, and that would include uh, um, uh, review Thank you. Uh, another, I had another question. I have two actually. Um, a geotechnical engineering report has been uh, supplied. Uh, what did that report find? So the report, the geotechnical report, uh, uh, essentially stated that, that there were no concerns. Um, in relation to the bank for the proposed location of, of the garage. And, and again, that'll be something that um, at the building permit application stage will be reviewed in detail uh, by our building services department. Uh, but uh, um, I did forward it to them uh, in advance and they, they took a, a look at it and indicated that there are no uh, concerns at this stage. Thank you. And the last question I have is, uh, concerning JML's roofing and renovations, the main floor plan, the final drawing, the dimensions of the building on that drawing are 22 by 34, which makes the 748 square feet. But on the bottom left-hand corner, um, the square footage is noted as 816 square feet. Well, that's a difference of 68 square feet. 
um, how do you reconcile the difference? I don't see the bottom left-hand corner the um, same as I printed out with the 816 square feet. It's the um, main floor plan, final design. I'm not seeing um, that uh, what you're referring to there. I guess uh, that might be uh, might be a question for the applicant um, uh, to look at. Uh, but as far as council is concerned, yeah, we we'd be uh, council's reviewing a 22 by 34 uh, foot garage. So if, if the if there's a different square footage noted somewhere, uh, there is. I can only speculate that's that would be perhaps uh, the applicant can clear that up. Okay, I'll ask the applicant. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. No questions. Thank you. I guess I just have one. I'm just wanting to confirm um, regarding the questions of um, fire. Uh, and I just wanted to confirm distance to the house on the drawing that was attached here. That the garage is the distance from the house is we've got 81.4 feet from the new or existing garage. It doesn't quite say, but it looks like the new garage. Yes. Yeah, so uh, based on my reading of the site plan, it's it, it'd be to the the corner of the the new garage. So it's the closest uh, it would be to the house is 81 point uh, or 81 uh, feet four inches. Thank you. I just wanted to see if it would be existing garage or the new garage. Thank you. If we don't have any additional questions for the planner, then um, I will ask if the applicant is available for uh, and, and if he or she has any uh, other comments they would like to add. Wise, have we got the applicant with us? Hi, yes, my name is Peter Allerton, and uh, I currently reside at 630 Grasmere Road. And I'd just Welcome. like to take a quick opportunity to thank you all very much for reviewing the application. Thank you for joining you. us tonight. So you Go heard ahead. what the planner uh, said. Is there anything else that you would like to add or if you're comfortable with what he covered? Um, I, I think I'm very comfortable with, with what he's covered. Uh, uh, West St. Paul and uh, Red River Planning have been very, very helpful with us and kind of guiding us through this process. As I'm sure you can concern, uh, can, can appreciate, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of things that have to be done. And if, if it's your first time doing it, um, you know, we want to make sure that it's done properly. And uh, both uh, Mr. Patton and Pam have been uh, fantastic in just helping us through the process. I'd like to hear that. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Got great staff. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go around the, the virtual council table here and see if uh, councillors have any questions for you. Sure. And I will start uh, with Councillor Prague. Councillor Prague, do you have any questions for the applicant? No questions for me. The applicant, it seems like he has done his due diligence. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Craig. Councillor Link, any questions for the applicant? Um, did you hear my question about the discrepancy on um, uh, square footage on the main floor plan? Um, page. Yes, I did. And and do you have any clue as to why there would be a a discrepancy? No, I don't. And my apologies. That would be an error on the part of JML Roofing. Um, the size of the garage that we are applying for is the twenty-two by thirty-four feet. So yep. that square footage is overstated. Uh, Mr. Patton did have the correct, um, the correct square footage. My apologies. No problem. I have one more question. Sure. Um, I'm looking at your site plan, and um, and I I I recall the photos that we just saw. It looked like your driveway extends to the west of your current old garage am i right that is correct yeah did you consider um 
maybe avoiding having to come for these variances by placing the new garage mm, sort of parallel to your septic field and then then you wouldn't have to have any variances at all and it wouldn't impede when you want to take down your old garage i don't think just wondering if you considered that absolutely and thank you for the question actually we've gone through about three or four different locations um, and different sizes and we actually the original design was going to be 24 feet by 34 so we actually went smaller to be able to fit into this location we actually were going to put the garage uh, where the white vehicle is there um, and just have it sort of in front of the garage but a little bit to the west to your question um, and we found that that what that was really doing was blocking off the property behind it then and pretty much rendering the property beside the existing garage as as useless then um and it actually really became a um, an eyesore for the neighbor on the west side because when he would look to the left he would actually see two garages one kind of in front of the other um and we felt that in putting them side by side uh it was actually better for the neighbor as well and he concurred thank you you're, you're very welcome And Councillor Bichetti, any questions? I think I've gone around once, but we we have so many planning items. I'm just double checking. No, I, I'm I'm just happy that he's you know working with his neighbor and thinking about how his neighbor is going to be looking at it too in the long run. So thanks for that. You're welcome. Thank you. And Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. Any questions for the applicant? Yeah. Um, questions and comments. Uh, I don't think you have a lot of separation between your your old garage and your new garage. I mean, uh, it's 18 inches, right? From eave to eave, it'll be three and a half feet wall to wall. Yes. Yeah, it's not a lot. One catches fire, the other one's going on you, right? Because they're so close. Um, why are you not demolishing the old building? If it's 56 years old, why not demolish that one and put the new one up? That actually, uh, that's a very good question. That was actually our original uh, plan was to demolish and, and put the new one right there. Um, in consultation with, with the contractors and uh, at JML um, and looking at the existing garage, we feel that we probably have another good 15 years in that garage. Uh, it was extremely well built uh, in the old days um and and we just feel that at this point it would just be a, a waste for us to do that but we did go through that process and actually got quotes on the demolition of that one so why do you need two garages we're using this current one here uh for storage uh okay. it's it's not big enough to have two vehicles in it and we would like to have the new one to be able to park the vehicles in we have a riding lawnmower we have two snow blowers um just for more space and we do know that that 10 years or so or 15 years down the road we will have to look at demolishing this one okay um i know your neighbor was in favor of it and um and we all age up and sell our property so one of the uh concerns for me is uh you're really close and it, you know if we give you approval for this that's fine and dandy because you have a nice neighbor now, but uh, you know somebody takes over that property, are they going to be as thrilled with you being as close to that their property as you will be? Which is basically what two feet, three feet, two feet, two feet. That's really close. So I have some concerns there because you know it's all fine and dandy now, but what will it be in ten years if or if somebody sells the property? So uh, I saw that there was sort of like a little parking lot there in front of your trailer. Yes. Did you consider putting it in there? Yes, and that's actually where, I, when I reflected on uh, the original, uh, we did actually consider putting it there, but then we would have one kind of in front of the other. So in consultation with our neighbor, it would actually, from his viewpoint, would be one garage in front of the other, and it would actually block his view to the east. He so doesn't want to see you? I'm sorry? He doesn't want to see you? 
<laughs> well, unless you know something I don't know, <laughs> which could be. So um, the garage would stick out onto the driveway. That's what you're saying, and would it would obstruct the other driveway into the garage? Yeah, where where this pad is that you're looking at is actually in front of the existing garage. So if we put it down on this pad, um, it would actually have one garage in front of the other. They would just be offset a little bit. It, so looks, like it, it, it looks like it's sideways, Mr. Allerton. Like when I'm looking at the two pictures, mm -hmm. it looks like it's like it's sort of off to the side from your other garage. Am I it, is off, it is off to the side, but it's forward. It's forward by about 20 feet. Yeah, right. So if you put the garage there, you're saying it's too long and it would obstruct your other garage? It would, it would, it would, it would do two things. It would render our current property behind that garage useless because we couldn't do anything with it. But then from our neighbor's point of view, he would have two garages, one in front of the other. Okay. And it would actually um, impede his view to the east. So in talking to him, his preference definitely was having it beside because then it really does not change his view whatsoever. Okay. It, 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 if we put it where we, we're in, like I say, we've gone through two or three different ideas with it. When we went out with him and looked, he by far was hand down and said, yeah, if you put it side by side, my view does not change whatsoever. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple of co comments or questions. I, I wanna commend you for reaching out to your neighbor and having that dialogue. The one thing I was gonna ask you when, when we read the letter is, if your neighbor just submitted it to Red River Planning or if you had an opportunity to actually talk to him. And, and you've answered that question for me in your discussion here that you've actually had a very good discussion with your neighbor about the placement of this badge. So I commend you for that because often, you. you know, that's an issue. So, okay, thank you very much. And, yeah, we just want to do things right. And we, you know, we wanted to do it so that it's, it was the right thing to do, but also take into consideration, um, you know, his point of view. Uh, he's been a fantastic neighbor so far. We have a good, re good relationship so far. So we certainly don't want to, jeopardize that and then also with future neighbors as well one of the things i looked at was the uh map and i don't know if uh, mr Patton can pull that up the overhead map of how far away his house is from the property line because obviously it's a concern to have something right on top of the property line and, and that was the first thing i looked at of how far back his house is so there's no measurements but his house is on the opposite side of the property as this it, it is, and there's really, and, and thank you very much for noticing it, that there really is nothing um, close to those garages. And like you say, his house is probably 200 feet away. And I'm just guessing we didn't measure it, but there, there is a substantial amount of, of distance um, between the garages and his home. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry, right. are you able to hear me now? Yes. Okay, but that just puts me at ease in terms of safety, not only for visibility and him, your neighbor looking right at this garage, but that it's so far set back in terms of fire and safety. So I, I, I'm glad that we could see the map on that. And the only other concern that I had that in, in closer inspection on looking at it was just, um, I wondered about the eaves over top, but it's a one foot eave. So um, often there's there's larger uh, soffits and eaves than that. And so I wondered if you were actually gonna be right on top of the property line. But in looking at this, your drawings uh, just have one foot, including eaves and soffit. So that's not a very, uh, that's not a very uh, far or uh, push out for the, uh, for the roof. Mm -hmm. No, those are all the questions I have. Thank you for bringing this to us. And again, I commend you for reaching out and talking to your neighbor. That's the most important, making sure that, uh, that you're working with those who may have concerns. Absolutely, thank you very much. If you wanna hang on, we'll see if there's anybody that we have uh, on the line registered to speak in support or opposition, and then you'll have an opportunity to speak again. Ms. Okay. Elias, have we got anybody registered? Mayor Christian, can we ask Mr. Allerton to just mute his uh, mic? Yes. Perfect.
Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We do have Ben McGilvery registered for information, and we have Michael Alberg registered against. Uh, Mr. Alberg did submit a brief comment stating um, that he has read that there's uh, variances applied for to reduce the clearances between properties to as little as 1.5 feet, uh, and that he wishes to um, relay his opposition to these changes. Great, thank you, Ms. Elias. Um, we'll give the applicant, is there anything else that you're wanting to add um, before we close the public hearing? Uh, no, there isn't. Would I be able to find out uh, who it was that had opposition? Uh, that was uh, Mr. Alberg. Mr. Alberg, okay, thank you. Yep. All right, um, hearing no other comments then, we'll close the public hearing and then vote on this matter. Uh, be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Link, seconded by Councillor Craig. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, carried. Thank you. And I will read the resolution. Whereas an application for variance uh, 11620 was received for the property located at 630 Grassmere Road to allow construction of a detached garage on the subject property in the RRO Rural Residential Overlay Zone with a reduced west side yard from five feet to two feet minimum with eaves protruding a further one foot and a reduced separation between accessory building from three feet minimum to 1.5 feet minimum. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representations both for and against the application, Therefore, here, therefore, be it hereby resolved that after careful consideration, Council of the RM of West St. Paul hereby approves variation order 11620 with the following conditions. One, the variance is to reduce the minimum required west side yard to two feet with eaves protruding further, a further one foot. And the minimum required separation distance between accessory buildings to 1.5 feet in order to allow for construction of a detached garage as proposed within the application. Any changes may require a new variance approval. Two, applicant owner obtains all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to those from the Red River Planning District and RM of West St. Paul. A variance order will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of decision. A board council or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection one for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Pragg, seconder. Seconded by Councillor Link. Any further discussion on this application? Councillor Kleiber? Yeah, I'm just gonna express my concern about the, um, the width between the two buildings. It is really small. It is very minimal. I mean, I can take a ruler or a little measuring tape and get in between 18 inches. That's a really small amount. Um, it's concerning, but I mean, it's his property and if he wants it that close because there's no other place to put it, I guess, you know, I don't know. If we um, if we have a, a measurement that we use for everybody and then we let one go, I think we have to have a good reason for passing it. And um, I don't know that I've been given a good enough reason to, allow 18 inches between two buildings. That's pretty tight. Um, but that's my that's my comment. Those are my thoughts on that. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Any other comments from Council? Councillor Link, go ahead. Well, I've got the same concerns. I'm not sure which way to go, quite frankly. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Link. Any other comments from council? Uh, recorded vote, I guess. Thank you, Ms. Shaw, request for recorded vote. All right, hearing no further discussion or comments, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you, sir.
your application has been passed and you can follow up with Red River Planning and, uh, and our municipality. And thank you again for sharing that um, you've had good service from Red River Planning and from West St. Paul. We appreciate hearing that. And, and if I could say maybe one last thing to that, uh, just to, to, to support it, I just can't tell you enough. Um, like I say, when, when this is the first time going through this and not knowing building permits and not being familiar with, with municipalities and that process, uh, David Patton and, and Pam have uh, just been um, amazing, amazing people to work with. Both of them, every time I've spoken to them, they've said, you know, if you have any more questions, call back, please feel free. Um, I, I could never have asked for anything better. They're just both fantastic. And they both get to hear your kudos. They're both on, uh, on in the meeting tonight. So thank you for sharing that with us directly. Thank you. And I have phoned both of them personally and thank them both just for their help. Wonderful. Thank you. Great. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. All right. We are on item 5.3 for conditional use, and I will uh, read the resolution. Be it resolved at the meeting of council, recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 105 of the Planning Act. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Bichetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Mr. Planner, I will turn it back over to you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So this application, conditional use 35 of 2020, is to allow storage containers uh, at 925 Capitalist Drive, this property zone CH commercial highway. It is on the north side of uh, Capitalist Drive. It's uh, approximately 1.5 acres in size, and it's currently being developed with a multi-tenant um, shop slash office building. There are two existing storage containers on site uh, that are being used to store materials and tools related to a stucco contracting business uh, that is expected to occupy uh, the main building. So if we look at the applicant's site plan before you now, uh, you can see the proposed location of the, uh, the containers to the rear of the building. Uh, again, this building is currently under construction. Um, rear uh, of the building uh, upon completion. Um, and uh, these are uh, some photos of what the uh, what the property looks like um, as of this week. So again, the, uh, the building's under construction. Uh, at the moment, the containers are located to the uh, to the far rear. Uh, of the property, but the applicants indicated that they will be moved to be behind uh, the building upon its completion. Um, the applicant's letter of intent states that the containers will be used for two years until the building has been completed and occupied. Uh, however, they have advised that they would like the option to keep the containers on the property permanently, uh, hence the conditional use application uh, before you tonight. Now, I just want to make a note that even if council were to, um, uh, to reject this application, uh, our office would still be in a position to issue permits for these containers on a temporary basis while the um, while the building is being constructed. So the only reason, again, that this is be, uh, a conditional use that's coming before council is because the applicant has indicated uh, that uh, they would like to keep the containers on the property permanently uh, after that building is uh, is completed. Uh, should council approve the requested conditional use, uh, our office recommends the following conditions: one that Conditional use approval is limited to allow two storage containers to the rear of the principal building as proposed. Any changes will require a new conditional use approval. And two, that the applicant obtain all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to uh, those from the uh, Red River Planning District and RM. And just to note that since the uh, report was written, uh, Manitoba Infrastructures indicated that they do not object to the approval of this application. Uh, that's all I have for this uh, application, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Planner. I will go around and see if there are questions for you on this application. Councillor Buschetti, do you have any questions to the planner on this application? Uh, yes, I do. Um, is there anything uh, in the in the plan here for fencing of the area? That's what I'm just looking through here. Yeah, so the applicant's proposing a, a chain link fence uh, around uh, much of the property. Um, now, I do want to point out that uh, the typical zoning bylaw requirements that the council deal with uh, deals with requiring uh, any outdoor storage to be enclosed by uh, opaque fencing. 
uh, it's not applicable in this case. The applicant isn't proposing any outdoor storage um, at this time. So they're just applying for the C containers, which uh, we would treat uh, in terms of the zoning bylaw requirements, similar to a, an accessory structure like a garage. So unless council <coughs> has conditions to that effect, they want to see some sort of enclosure or, uh, or, or opaque fencing, that would not be a requirement um, under the zoning bylaw. So just to, so council is aware if um, it's deemed necessary to ensure that the containers don't have any negative effects on other properties, um, conditions could be added to that effect, uh, but it's not a requirement uh, under the zoning bylaw. Um, the applicant was given the opportunity to expand the application to include any uh, future outdoor storage, um, but they declined. So if, if if um, they are proposing exterior storage in the future, that would be another conditional use uh, application that would be required. Well, the, this property has had stuff, trailers and everything stored all over the back, all over the year. I'll ask the applicants that question. Um, the next thing, yeah, I'll wait till the applicant comes up. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for the planner? uh mr planner was there a site visit by your office uh just the uh to the, take the pictures right that's right yeah um i, I think i think i share the same concerns as councillor buschetti and that this looks like it's and it has been for quite a while at least the two years i've been counselor is being used as a contractor's yard and so i have my concerns with approving more storage because there is a lot of stuff that has been stored on there that is not being shown in these pictures now when you say there's multiple units going in is the plan to that they're going to occupy the entire space or they're going to rent out the spaces uh that would be a question for the applicant uh i'm not aware of their plans you don't have that information yourself i do not okay thank you that's all for me Councillor Craig, any questions for the planner? Well, I have the same concerns as Councillor Kleiber and Councillor Buffetti. Like for two years, there have been stuff all over the yard. It was an eyesore, you know? And I'm um, just waiting on the applicant. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Craig. And Councillor Link, any questions for the planner? Just to confirm then, in the highway commercial zone you don't first have to have to have a building built and then you can have accessory uses you can have those storage containers on the property as you build we got that right the uh, requirement of the zoning bylaw is that a building permit has to be obtained for the principal building before uh, we can issue permits for uh, accessory structures. In this case, we have issued a building permit for the main uh, building. As you can see, it's under construction. So we would be in a position, should council approve this conditional use application to, uh, to issue permits uh, for the permanent location of these uh, sea containers. I missed what you said about you, you obviously have a building permit. Is that what you said? Yes, yeah, so uh, the requirement under the zoning bylaw uh, is just that uh, a building permit needs to have been obtained for the principal building um, before our office could issue permits for accessory structures. Okay, thank you. Councillor Link, I have no questions at this time. Thank you, Mr. Planner. Ms. Elias, have we got the applicant uh, available? Yes. Uh, Madam Mayor, we have Cavi Braun available with us, registered in favor of the application. And that's Hello. Mr. Braun. Hi, welcome. Thank you. It, so you've heard uh, the presentation on, on this from the planner. Is there anything else that you would like to present to council that would help us make our decision on this? Um, the fence is a chain link fence. Um, I think once the building goes up, any square footage or area behind the building won't be visible anymore. So I, I do understand and acknowledge that there have been some things that, that have made it a bit of an eyesore, um, but I think it's just because there was nothing else there. Um, the neighbor beside us owns a contracting uh, company as well. 
uh, kitchens and et cetera. And if you go behind their building, you'll see the same sort of stuff. You'll see uh, granite slabs and, and all sorts of stuff, which is fine. I'm just kind of pointing out that there are other contractors as well. Um, we don't plan on doing any other exterior storage. Uh, it's not on any of the drawings, but in the back where the wood fence is, um, where the residential area is going to be, we do have plans to, I mean, it hasn't been discussed too much, but to install or, or to build another building in the back. Um, this could help with, with storage as well. Uh, we do plan on occupying the first bay. Uh, this will help with not all of the storage that's in the back, uh, scaffolding, et cetera, but it'll help with some of the stuff that is stored outside. Um, yeah, that's okay. And on the the west side, it is uh, the chain link fence. But if let's say our neighbor wasn't happy with the storage that we had there, um, I don't think it would be an issue to install um, a wood fence where you couldn't you couldn't see the other side, just out of respect for them. But I guess we'll cross that bridge once we get there. Great, thank you, Mr. Braun. I'm gonna go around, um, and you heard that council already had some questions, but I'm gonna go around again, and, and uh, if you're okay to take questions? Yeah. All right, Councillor Bruschetti, you had questions for the applicant? Yes, I did. Uh, so you are good with putting um, slats in or a wooden fence uh, regarding your property. Like, I'm not gonna speak to the other property because this is what's on the table right now, but yeah. you've got a lot of, trailers and all kinds of stuff on your property for many years so you can understand where we're going at that with uh, the residential possibly coming up behind you and a yeah. lot of the aesthetics that the buildings right now on capitalist are you know they're, they're putting a lot of time and money into it and we're dealing with a lot of the ones that have been kind of neglected i guess so but you're good with putting the slots in around the fence if asked Yes, I I do things that are uh, I guess above and beyond just to make sure that our neighbors and and that you guys are happy, uh, including that wood fence. I know the the fence to the north or that is facing the residential side will be getting an, a really nice wood fence. So we could do that same style on our west elevation if if that was required. Okay, and then um, the sea can or sea cans. Um, I'm not sure what condition they're in. We've been asking, you know, that they get cleaned up, painted to kind of match the building, kind of blend into the surroundings, that kind of thing. So they don't, you know, they don't look like they just came off the back of the train with the names on the back sides of them, that kind of stuff. Okay. I, I know when they, when we purchased them, they were freshly painted and in actually really, really good condition. But, um, if you wanted them both the same, we could, we could probably paint the, the white one to maybe the dark green, or if there was a specific color that you guys wanted, I don't think that would be uh, an issue for us. And then just my opinion, but we've been doing this, we've dealt with a few of these in our last few planning meetings. We've allowed one, we've had some of them say, you know, they've had other ones and we've asked them to remove them. So I'm good with one to be consistent with the rest of the applications we've had in previous. So, Thanks for your time and thanks for putting this application out. Thank you for uh, for having me. Councillor Councillor Kleiber, do you have uh, any other questions for the applicant? Um, Mr. Braun, you always you sound like a young man that's just starting his business going. Am I correct on that one? Uh, yeah, I guess for all intents and purposes, yeah. Uh, eight eight <laughs> okay. years I've been been helping run it now so yeah um so here's a couple of my concerns because uh this property is very visible from the highway and um well i'm not going to be as diplomatic it's been a mess and so when i see uh scaffolding all over the place and forms all over the place and like basically you've used that property as a storage facility without a building and now you're coming to us with uh, uh, a building permit. You're going to put a building up, but you still want to keep all that storage. I get that you're a sub trade, but 
you're using this property, which is commercial highway as um, an M2, which is a contractor's yard. And that's really what's happening here is that you're a contractor using it as a contractor's yard. Now, I have a problem with that because these are supposed to be upscale buildings here. So I would rather see some of your prop, some of your equipment go into the building. And now I'm kind of being told, well, I'm not going to really do that because I'm going to rent out part of the building. I'm going to have one space in the building. That's what I'm assuming is going to happen. But you can correct me, and I hope you do. And I'm going to keep all this outdoor storage. Is that what's going to happen, Mr. Brown? Uh, some of it will go inside. Not all of it. Some of it will be stacked behind the building, not visible to the public. Um, and I think maybe uh, that's where the other councillor had a good point, is building that wood fence so that it, it wasn't visible. Um, but some will, or the intention is for some of it still to remain outside. Yeah, and that's that's where I'm having the problem. Like trailers are things that, you know, like they're obviously they're site trailers. You're you're carrying some some of your materials in those trailers and then taking them to site. Is that correct? That's correct. The, the trailers, um, especially during the summer, they're they're actually not even at our yard. Yeah. Sometimes they just come back for the night. Um, most of the time they're just go site to site and they don't even come back to to the yard. I've seen a lot of scaffolding out there too, just kind of loose. You know, I, I would yeah. I would say I would say this to you, you know, there's two things going on here. You're in the wrong zone, in my opinion. You should be in a different zone. That's one thing. Um, you gotta keep as much as you can in your facility to keep it clean. Uh, the other yeah. thing is if you keep leaving your scaffolding out, it could disappear because there's lots of theft in the area and in order to protect yourself that kind of stuff should go in your building uh, as far as your sea cans are concerned um you know we have to be fair i i just don't want to see honestly between you and me and whoever's watching i don't want to see more hoarding because that's kind of what i'm seeing there is a big mess i would prefer that if we give you one sea can you clean the rest of it up because that stuff needs to go into the building you get, certainly your trailers are part of your business and can remain outside as long as it's kept clean. But if we um, approve one of one of the seat can containers, how much of that can you clean up? Uh, majority of it. Okay, that's that's for sure what I'd like to see. Thanks for answering my questions and good luck in your business. Thank you. Am I the only one frozen or is everybody okay? Mayor Every Christian, you're frozen? I can't hear Mayor Christian. Can, can you guys hear me now? CAO is frozen too, so <laughs> you're both frozen on our screens. I guess if you have more questions, it would be a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys able to hear me? I can't hear anybody. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We can hear you now. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. You're in and out, Mayor Christian. Yes. All right. Should we just have Council Prareg say his his to his questions?
Are you able to hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Councilor applicant, do you have any questions for the applicant? Yes, I do. Mr. Brown, um, you, admitted, you admitted that the place was in a mess. And you, the, you see the past comes to haunt back. And I would very much like to see the place cleaned up, clean it up, because that whole area is a new area. And we're trying to build West St. Paul. And I, you're a young individual trying to get, get on with life, do a good business. And even people coming to do business and see, see the establishment like that, it was a turn off. And even you take care of it, I know the building is just going up. You take care of it, make it look presentable from the highway. I have no concerns for giving you the one CKN so long as it's in good condition. And painting it, painting it to match the color of the building. So it looks like it comes with the building. It, the anesthetic in it. It would look wonderful. I have no complaints. And the better you guys keep the whole area there, Mr. Brown, it's better for the people of West St. Paul and people traveling through. That's why I don't want to be some very selfish. I'm not selfish. I love individuals getting on with their lives. And I want if you could do that and put the fencing, I will. And best of luck, Mr. Brown. Very good. Thank you. Councillor Link, any questions? Can you hear me? Okay. I have the same, basically, repeat other councillors' concerns. One C can, to be fair, clean it up so it looks like the building matches. Clean up the property. It is important, as Councillor Parag said. Um, but thank you for your honesty. You, you told us that you intend to have outdoor storage, some following the completion of your building. And then there will be some requirements for fencing. And I think you realize that. And we would hope also that there's some landscaping, I think, requirements uh, 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 on um, the property. And it would be great to see if you not only cleaned it up, you added a little bit of greenery to make it more attractive. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Link. Um, Mr. Brown, are you able to hear me okay? I'm having some technical difficulties here tonight. Yeah, perfectly. I can hear you. Yeah. Great, thank you. My one question would be, um, as a, a follow-up to Councillor Buschetti's question, um, for others in your area along Capolis there, Council has been uh, allowing one container to stay um, and, and we did have another situation where Um, there was construct a second and, and we allowed the applicant to have but just for a 12 month period um, I know you mentioned two years on something that you would be supportive of oh I'm can you hear me okay? I can only hear every second word could you please repeat I'm sorry I'm having so much trouble here yeah I can I can, I can. 
Okay. Okay, sir, I'm sorry, I'm just having so much trouble here. And just a mic off and through here. Mary, right. are you able to hear me now? Okay, yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. Good, perfect. The question that I had was just as a follow up to Councillor Bichetti's on other applications uh, down capitalists and other businesses. Council has uh, allowed uh, applicants to keep one container permanently and, and other containers, one container specifically on another application, um, temporarily until construction was done and they could uh, move things inside their building. Is this something that you would be supportive of if, of if this council were to say you could leave one uh, on site indefinitely, cleaned up and, and painted nicely, and the other that we would give you um, one year to um, to empty and move that you can have the two for for one year and after that just the one. Um, well, yes, I guess so. I I do think though it would be beneficial for everybody if I could have that second. I I could put more of that scaffolding or the stuff that is a bit of an eyesore into the sea containers to keep it in an area that's a little more enclosed so that it doesn't look like it's scattered. Um, okay. But if if it doesn't get approved, I, I wouldn't fight with you guys. I would just take it away after the building is completed. Um, I do want to have a good relationship with you guys. I'm just, it's a little bit hard. Yes. <laughs> a lot of scaffolding and stuff. And, so I'll ask, the, I'll ask a okay. follow-up question because I, I can I can appreciate that. Um, just on the size of your containers, they are ten by twenty. So they're the they're the half size. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I I think that I would be okay you having the two there because the one that we approved on another site was a forty foot the larger one. Um, so if you think oh, yeah. you can clean up your yard and and contain it into the two containers and they're cleaned up, that might be something that council is supportive of. Okay. And th just the other question then, I know that there's been lots of concerns um, raised about the exterior storage and fencing. And I'm just gonna ask the planner, the application has not come forward and I can understand uh, my colleagues at the table raising concerns um, and, and you know, there's been a lot of things stored outside before this building has come up. Are we able to be adding uh, restrictions about exterior storage when that is not part of the application as the sea container uh, application are we able to add fencing and or are we going to have to um, have this individual come back on a conditional use for exterior storage so um, if the applicants proposing exterior storage uh, in the future they will be required to submit another conditional use application um, so what you uh, decide here tonight is specific to the storage containers that being said, if you are fully within um, uh, your rights to require any conditions you deem necessary to ensure that the containers are compatible uh, with the area. So that could include um, fencing and some of the other things that are applicable to outdoor storage, but you would have to add those specifically as conditions. Um, okay. So to summarize, this application is not for exterior storage, but should council choose, conditions could be added similar to those that would be required for any exterior storage. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Patton. I appreciate the clarification there. Councillor Preg, you have your hands up. Go ahead. This is a question for the applicant. Does those scaffolds fit in those containers? It, I, it, they, do. they would, yes. They would? Yeah, the, the frames are five feet by six feet, and they stack really nicely, as, as much as you probably <laughs> don't think that they do. They, there is a way to... To stack them so that uh, yeah they they look nice and tidy and I know I'm sure I I'll have time uh, to make some closing points but yeah I guess in the meantime they do fit in the trailer or in the sea can. That's, that's all. I just want to find out because to me it looks big and I drive by there it looks huge so I don't know it'll fit into a container but you're the expert. Thank you. I, I guess my other question for you, um, Mr. Braun, would be, and, and you've heard the concerns raised here and you've talked about fencing. You have already an existing um, uh, fence, a chain link fence along the side of the property there to your neighbors. 
and you mentioned about willingness to do wood fencing, but would you be willing to put slats in? Well, I'm, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to be reasonable and figure out if there's a way that we can have some compromise where um, anything that's going on in the back is hidden, but we're not forcing you to rip out a, a, your fencing and install all new fencing as part of this application. It, so would slats be something that you would be open to? Yeah, if council uh, would be happy with that, of, of course. Okay, those are all my questions. Thank you. If there are no further questions from Council, I'm going to refer to uh, Ms. Elias and see if we have anyone registered in support, opposition, or for information. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We do have Ben McGilvery registered for information. Uh, we do have a couple of people registered against. We have Michael Alberg. Uh, we also have Waterside Development Corporation. They submitted a letter um, regarding this application and the, the next upcoming uh, three conditional use applications. Um, they state that this area was developed for office and small warehouse use with building form and materials guidelines as mentioned in Schedule G of the development agreement, allowing storage containers and an automobile service station. That would be in terms of an upcoming application. Um, this would have a negative impact on the current and future business. We have received multiple hearing trials on multiple lots uh, in this area. It seems that once an owner puts up one container, it is likely to lead to three, four, or even more. Having these lots filled with storage containers should not be allowed. With a new church and new residential subdivision starting, this is not a good fit for the area, creating a complete eyesore for the entire area. Currently, it's a, it is a pleasure to drive on Capulus and see the well-constructed buildings uh, and well-kept landscaped properties. We hope that by approving, sorry, by not approving these conditional use uh, applications, the continued growth in the mm -hmm. area will be mm -hmm. And that time mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we don't have anyone. Mm -hmm. Sorry, can I just ask anybody else uh, on, on the line to mute while Ms. Elias is talking and then we won't have feedback. I think it, I think that's all we have from Ms. Elias, just making sure. Yes, Madam Mayor, that was everything. Hopefully you heard me okay. If there's anything you need me to repeat, uh, please let me know. Great. Council, we're okay. Everybody was able to hear Ms. Elias. Okay, Councillor Link, go ahead. I didn't hear anything about um, the first objection. I heard about Waterside Development, but I didn't hear anything about the first person reason for objections. Um, Michael Alberg, I think. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Alberg, um, he just provided that he would like to register his opposition to any use of CCANs on the various applications that have been that have been registered on tonight for tonight on this subject. Thank you, Ms. Elias. Any other questions from Council to Ms. Elias? All right. So you've been able to hear the um, objections, Mr. Braun, um, and I will give you the opportunity to follow up if there's anything further that you'd like to say. Um, yeah, just to one of the councillors who was talking about landscaping, uh, there is a landscape plan, and I think uh, that will take uh, your eye once you're driving by. It'll be nicely uh, groomed. Uh, we plan on installing a nice uh, black a metal gate in the front just that opens and closes just like the building that Ridgemark has um, uh, to once the building is built um, and the CCAN cans or can <laughs> in the meantime is in place and painted the same color as the building uh, any scaffolding that that would be there I think with the CCANs most of it in there and, and if there is some behind would really be minimized um, and then with the fence as well along the, the west, whether it's wood or uh, slatted, um, I think most of it would be hidden. And then uh, to the, the last argument there from uh, the development company, the the fence, I think you can see it in one of the pictures, is uh, seven feet high. The secans are nine. And if the secans were painted a close color to the building, even if you could see it from the other side of the fence, it would blend in really well, and I, I don't think it would be a, a negative effect to the, the development around it. But. 
Thank you, Mr. Brown. I'll just see if uh, councillors have any follow-up questions for you. Councillor Bruschetti? There was a fence to the east and the west, both sides, just it keeps being mentioned on one side, but we would want to see fencing both, both sides. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Link, any follow-up questions for the applicant? No, uh, but I I, uh, I wish to say that perhaps I do believe we should stick to the one C can. He may have to, now he's got two different sizes on this site plan. Looks like one is larger. Um, to be fair, we've, we've okayed one. I'm okay with one yet. It can be the large one, fine, but one. Mr. Braun, as a follow-up, are these both the same size? Are they both 10 by 20? Uh, one is a little bit smaller. I don't have the exact length of the, the second one, uh, at least not off uh, on top of my head, but it's probably five feet shorter. It probably is the 10 by 15. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Prague, any follow-up questions for Mr. Braun? Uh, in that waterside the corp, was the developer in that place? the lands and so that was sold. And this letter came and they are worried now because what's going to happen there because schools, churches, everything going in there, you know? So look at this place now, what's happening? And they themselves didn't expect this to, to, to occur there, you know? And if we, we have to clean it up. And I agree one and the place have to be clean, not some of it. And that's the only way I'm going to go for it. It has to be clean. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Prague. Councillor Kleiber, any follow up for the applicant? I think you're still on mute. Sorry. No? I, I think the applicant knows what I want. And. Okay. Uh, we have to keep in mind here what the uh, developer also said and that this is being used as a contractor's yard. So if the applicant wants to stay on that property, they have to make it not look like a contractor's yard because it's not zoned for that. And that's what Waterside is concerned about and is complaining about. So if we're going to approve one, he gets to pick which one he wants on there and the rest of it, you put it in your new building. Uh, get it out of there i mean we all have businesses i have a construction business there's only certain things i can put outside the rest of the time it's got to go inside you got to keep it clean and you know what honestly if you were in an m2 zone in the industrial park you wouldn't have as many restrictions but because you've chosen capitalists that's why we have to impose the restrictions thank you councillor so I think, Mr. Braun, from, from my perspective, my, my concluding comments to you would be, um, I, I want to start with some positive. I know you, you probably feel like you're getting hammered here by council. I, I, I want to commend you that the building is going up, that this isn't operating out of a trailer anymore. So it is very good progress. And the pictures of your building coming up look like it's going to be a beautiful building. We, we are happy to have you in West St. Paul and we support our local businesses and your plan for landscaping and the things that you want to do that you're moving ahead with. Um, I do want to commend you on that. We're, we're, we're wanting to see this move forward. Um, I think you can sense the frustration from my colleagues. And, and the reason for that is when things don't look well, uh, we get the phone calls on it. We get the emails on it, right? What's happening here? When is the building going up? What's with all this stuff stored outside, right? From other businesses on Capitalist and from residents as well. So I think what you're hearing tonight is some of the frustration from counselors that are fielding calls from other businesses and and residents on this, which you can appreciate, I'm sure. Yeah. I, I, I think what council is, you know, that there's going to be some agreement here on council that if we can have you either, and we'll see once we discuss, but put some slats in fencing um, or, or solid fencing, whatever the will of council is. Um, and, and it sounds like it might be one container based on what we've done from the past. If, if you're agreeable to that and moving forward to clean this up, um, I, I think that we can move forward in a good direction. Very good. Okay. If you've got nothing further uh, that you're wanting to add, then I'll close the public hearing and we can make a decision on this.
No, I uh, I guess I am sorry that it, it did look the way that it did. Uh, for the last, yeah, I guess when we bought it originally, there was not even one building down the strip. Um, that's not an excuse. It's just, I guess yeah. it, it was what it was. And then uh, we we were at a different location and we outgrew it. Now we're committed to the building and we love the area. I I think it's beautiful for, um, yeah, it's a beautiful strip. When you drive down the perimeter and you see all the nice buildings, I think ours is going to be second to none. Um, the exterior is going to be, I think, one of the only buildings that has full EFAS. Um, so it'll bring a little bit of diversity to to the area, and not just all metal buildings, but some with a, a bit of character. Um, landscaping is going to be nice. The secans, you'll just catch a little corner of them, and, and everything else will be very nice and tidy uh, with the fences surrounding. I, I think you guys will be happy, but I do understand and appreciate that there was some frustration and I'm, I'm sorry that you guys did get some phone calls as a business owner. I know that when there's a screw laying on the ground, I'll get 20 phone calls about it. So I, I understand and I, I do apologize. Thank you for but that. It, it's, a, it's a good plan and we want to see you get there. I want to, I want to drive by and see this beautiful picture here with the landscaping and the building. And I, I know we will. Councillor Prague, you've got your hand up. Go ahead. I have one more question from Mr. Brown. What were you going to store in the containers, by the way? These two containers that you applied for. I'm curious to know. Uh, the smaller one is, most of it is filled with uh, tarps, orange tarps. Um, that would that would have been a huge eyesore leaving those outside, but they're uh, going to be all tucked away because we don't use them in the in the summertime. They're only for winter use, so we do want to have them out of sight and out of mind when when we're not using them. The bigger one, uh, that's where. Some of the scaffolding can go if if we can't. Oh, you're only letting me use one. Okay, I'll have to think about it a little bit. But one of them is all all tarps, and if I have to move the rest of the stuff into the building, then that it is what it is. Because the reason I ask, uh, if you were going to um, the other one, you can have uh, like a temporary. I was thinking if it's a real necessity, I don't want to put you out the place to for temporary. The, the second one. You know, for the very temporary, a short period of time, I was thinking that way. You know, for yeah. the place, I was thinking of a for the second one to be very temporary. Yeah, one of the issues that I'm, or that I guess I, that I'm thinking about is, so our building is obviously going to be heated. the The stucco products that we use, they're very weather sensitive, so we can't have them outside at all. So we need space to keep the the products that are liquid because um, they're not allowed to freeze else else they're garbage so we'll have to brainstorm a little bit we didn't want to take up all of the building like all all five bays we just wanted one for ourselves but if we have to take up two of the bays um, the second bay would be more than enough to to house everything it's just yeah that we just wanted the building to not be too hard on on the um on the business itself but if we had to make it work we could Adam mayor and when is the building supposed to be completed mr braun when when is your building to be completed uh the exterior of the building itself by spring um we do plan on heating and hoarding during the winter um so late spring probably could be good for office space. And then by, let's say, middle of summer, um, maybe late summer at worst case scenario, depending on on asphalt contractors, et cetera, um, then everything would be landscaped and, and completed. But the reason I ask, because if it's temper, you got those, uh, the wraps, and it, you could take the other bay and put it in there, so you don't need it. You're just using it temporarily, the second one. I'm trying to help out. You understand what I'm getting at? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, if that will work. I don't want, you know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. As, as a follow-up to Councillor Preggs, if Council decides on this, and it's something that we've done for another application, if we decide to allow you the one permanent container and give you one year, say, to to have the other one as temporary and then it has to be moved is that something that you would be agreeable to 
to give you time to finish your building and get other items inside your building? Yeah, I would appreciate that. That uh, would go a long way. All right, so maybe that is something that council can consider. It's something that needs done for another application. Councillor Link, you've got your hand up. I think there's an intent also to to build another shop behind uh, in the back area. So um, your intention is to rent that in addition to renting your bays, as many bays as possible. Uh, am I correct on that? Yeah, that would be the long-term goal, yes. Uh, so you will have extra shop room to rent and a use of one of the extra bays for your storage is feasible then? Uh, yes, it would be. We're just trying to be careful. It's too much overhead in the company. It it's, can be dangerous. Um, the positive note, it is an asset, the building itself. So I guess I have to take that with a bit of a grain of salt, but yeah, good questions. We have no microphone, Mayor Christian, put your microphone on. Thank you. I'm having a fun night here with technology between switching back and forth from a phone and uh, I don't see any other questions for Mr. Braun, so I'm going to thank you, Mr. Braun, and you're able to stay and listen to council discuss and vote on this matter. And I'm going to close the public hearing. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Cliver, seconded Councillor Link. Any discussion? Hearing the question, all those in favor? opposed that is carried uh, i'm not sure what the best approach would be here mr planner maybe i'll ask you for me to read through the whole resolution it sounds like council wants some wants some additions to this do you think it would be appropriate if we discuss those additions before i read through this whole resolution i think that would be appropriate okay so council we've we've got the resolution and the conditions in the resolution uh, the first condition calls for allowing two storage containers to the rear of the property. What I think I heard council say based on other applications is one permanent and one temporary for one year until construction of the building is completed to allow him to move things inside. Is council agreeable to that? Nodding his head. Yes. I am, okay, yes. Council thank you, yeah. Councillor Bright. Council, are you okay? Councillor Kleiber, thank you. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I think that what we have to keep in mind too is that this, uh, you know, we're saying that he could use two bays and some people are feeling bad about that. I'm not feeling bad about that because he's probably gonna expand his business. And as he expands, he's gonna need more room anyways. So I think that using the two bays to store everything, that's a good thing. Thank you. Councillor Link, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I think in that condition, could we say the temporary uh, basis for uh, use until completion of the building? Or one year, whichever is first? I'm wondering if we give him one year because when the building's done, he still has to take the time to move the stuff inside. Are we okay with just giving him one year? We gave 12 months on the last one. That's what, that's what the number we used, so. Okay, so and, and that's be consistent. On step outside. Could we also put a condition then that uh, no other outdoor storage take place of materials? And I don't mean specifically trailers can go out there, that's fine, but any outdoor materials then would have to be put inside into those heat cans. So he can put a scaffolding in, he said he could. Let's get it in indoors and get him to clean up a little bit into those into those uh, sea cans. Can we put a condition in that he has no materials stored outside, but he can have his trailers. He's got a couple of trailers there he could put stuff into as well. Maybe, Mr. Patton, maybe you can talk to, to us about that. I, I understand what you're saying, Councillor Kleiber. My only concern is, is just that he's in the midst of construction. So we're gonna see some things outside there until he's done construction. 
And then I understand with our zoning bylaw, he can't have exterior storage right now. That's correct. So uh, the the bylaw doesn't permit exterior storage um, unless conditional use approval is granted. So uh, a certainly condition could be added just to make that explicit, but I, I would say it's also redundant to a point because it's a it's already in the zoning bylaw. But uh, but again, no issues with uh, with adding a condition, uh, for example, that uh, um, that exterior storage is, is not permitted unless a conditional use. Um, uh, to allow it is granted by council, some, something similar uh, to that could be a condition. I'm good for adding that, just to make it clear. Yep. Yes, clarity. Councilor Craig, you too? Totally agree. You too, the, good suggestion. The, the construction, Councilor, uh, I mean, Mayor Christian, it, it's normal, you have the, I saw the BFI bin, bin out front, he's putting all the BFI stuff in there. That's normal for construction. I'm talking about the other stuff in the back, so. I agree 100%. I think it's a good suggestion and the will of councils to include that in there, I agree. All right then, um, so uh, have we got, are you able to write out a, a new number one condition for us, Mr. Patton, and addition of the uh, no exterior storage? And then the other so issue that I heard from council we're wanting to add a condition that the sea cans are painted to match the building and well kept. Can we have you write a condition for that as well, Council? Um, is that something that you're wanting to include as a condition? Go ahead, Councillor Machetti. I believe uh, the planner said that we could add the condition to make it similar to the exterior storage, as if there was exterior storage, which makes the whole area consistent with the finishings and stuff of the back. So. Thank you, Councillor Pride. Go ahead. Well, he's only using one. One of them is permanent. I, I agree, with painting that one. The one that's temporary. Why should he do that? You know, it's temporary. He's moving that after the year. You know, let's not add additional expenses to him. He's painting one that's staying there permanently. The one that he's removing after a year take it away why does he have to waste paint and so you know he's a business guy just trying to get up good point councillor craig i agree so can we just put a condition that the permanent uh the one container that remains to be painted thank you mr planner councillor link i saw your hand up go ahead yeah we have to rebees be a little reasonable too about when it's to be painted because he can't paint it now in the winter time. He's got to paint it within that year's time, right? I agree. I think we're wanting to be reasonable. So on the issue of being reasonable, um, what is the will of council regarding fencing? There's an existing chain link fence up there. If we're putting a condition in here that we don't want to see any exterior storage, are we asking him to put slats in? I don't think it would be reasonable to ask this property owner to put in a wood fence. Um, I'm going to go around the virtual table here and see what the will of council is regarding the uh, fencing. Councillor Craig, go ahead. I like slats. You know, let's do slats. Slats? Okay. Thank you. Councillor Link, what are your thoughts on the fencing? Other business owners have done slats and it looks good as long as they're maintained over time. Thank you, Councilor Link. Councilor Link, what's your thought on the fencing? I'm good with slats because he already has the chain link partially up, I believe, I, I heard in there. So it's no more expense by taking that down to go to the wood. So just the slats. Councilor Fiber, thank you, Councilor Bader. Your thoughts on the fencing? Yeah, I'm, I'm good with the slats. Me too. I agree. I think that's fair. So, Mr. Patton, I'm going to, do you need a couple of minutes to finish writing out the new conditions that Council has added, or are you okay? Uh, I believe I've got them drafted, if Council wants to hear them and, uh, and uh, make any changes. All right. How about I have you read the resolution instead of me this time, and we'll get a mover and a seconder from you reading it instead of us going through it twice. Is that okay? Sure. Perfect. Um, so, uh, I don't know the resolution per se, I just have the, the conditions, but I can certainly read out the conditions. 
Um, number one, that conditional use approval is limited to allow two storage containers to the rear of the principal building as proposed within this application. Any changes will require a new conditional use approval. Two, that the applicant slash owner to obtain all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to those from the Red River Planning District and RM of West St. Paul. Three, that the number of storage containers on the property be reduced to one within one year. Four, that exterior storage is not permitted unless conditional use approval is granted by council. Five, that the storage container to remain permanently be painted to match the main building to the satisfaction of the RM with one, within one year. Uh, and six, that privacy slabs be installed in the proposed fencing or that no opaque fence be installed within one year. Mr. Patton, can I just have you on the painted to the satisfaction? Does it say to the satisfaction of the RM? Uh, that's how it's written currently, yes. Can you make that to the satisfaction of the CAO? Because we don't want that coming back to council. That would be an administrative decision. Absolutely. So the condition would read that the storage container to remain permanently be painted to match the main building to the satisfaction of the CAO within one year. Thank you. All right, I'll read the beginning of the resolution. Whereas the applicant has applied for conditional use 3520 to permit storage containers at 925 Capitalist Drive, lot 13, plan 57170 in the commercial highway zone. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, public, a public hearing has been held to hear representation for and or against the conditional use application. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Royal Municipality of West St. Paul approve conditional use 3520 under the following conditions, and those conditions were just read by the planner. The approval of a conditional use will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of decision. A board, council, or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection 1 for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. Can I have a mover on this, please? Councillor Prague, second to Councillor Buschetti. Any further discussion on this? I'm going to ask for a recorded vote, Ms. Shaw. And seeing and hearing no further discussion on it, I will call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Thank you, Mr. Braun. You can keep a container and one temporarily for a year. Thanks for having me. I think. Uh... I appreciate the politics a little bit more now and <laughs> having been uh, grilled here. So thanks for your time. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing your building complete. After fighting and you're well on your way. Very good. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. All right, Council, with the uh, technical difficulties I'm having here and us being two hours in, I think now is a good time to take a 15-minute uh, break so that I can address some sound issues here and we can uh, have some water and take a break. So back in, uh, can we say 8.20? That gives us just over 15 minutes. Thank you, and I will see you guys in 15 minutes. Enjoy your break.
All right, we are live. Thank you. Thank you everybody for waiting during our break and welcome back. We are now on item 5.4 and I will open the public hearing. Be it resolved that the meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 105 of the Planning Act. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Councillor right. Buschetti, seconded right. Councillor Link. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, that is carried. Thank you. And I will turn it back over to you, Mr. Planner, to discuss this planning application. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this is uh, conditional use uh, number 38 of 2020. Uh, it's at 979 Capitalist Drive. And the applicant's proposing outdoor storage, um, including above ground fuel tanks to be associated with a contractor's establishment, specifically a drilling contractor on the subject property. Again, 979 Capitalist Drive, that is zone CH commercial highway. Um, as you see here, it's, uh, we'll call that the, uh, the northeast um, side of Capitalist Drive. Uh, and it's approximately 2.6 acres in size. It is currently undeveloped, um, so uh, no buildings on, on the property. Uh, Maple Leaf Drilling uh, Limited, a drilling contractor, does intend to develop this property uh, with two buildings. And those uh, um, buildings uh, will consist of garage and office space. Uh, if there's somebody with their uh, with their mic on, uh, just a reminder to mute the, the mics if, uh, um, if you're not speaking. So um, the applicant site plan uh, does show those, uh, those two uh, proposed buildings, uh, as well as some other items, including the uh, proposed style of fencing and some of the exterior storage that would be proposed on, on the property. So again, uh, Maple Leaf Drilling um, would be uh, constructing these two buildings. Um, the uh, the first uh, planned building would uh, would consist of two stories of office space as well as a garage space. Now, I do want to point out that a contractor's establishment is a permitted use uh, on the property. It's the exterior storage that requires conditional use approval from council. Um, so uh, the applicant did supply some building plans. I'm not going to dwell on these two. Uh, um, too long as uh, once again the the use is permitted these buildings appear to comply with all the um, the regulations of the zoning bylaw so um, again it's two stories of office space uh, as well as the one story of the warehouse you can see in the section uh, uh, before you now um, if I'm just going to go back to the uh, the overall site plan um, to point out uh, that the applicant is proposing uh, a six foot high opaque fence of galvanized metal around the rear storage compound um, that would comply with the uh, zoning bylaw requirements for outdoor storage. Uh, access to the compound would be via uh, motorized folding gates of painted black metal. And before you now, um, you can see the pictures of both the proposed fen uh, fencing, that's uh, the top image, as well as the, uh, the proposed style of gates. Uh, and let's see uh, the image. Uh, uh, towards the bottom. Uh, in terms of the uh, equipment that's being uh, proposed um, for exterior storage, the applicant did provide a list which was uh, included in the council package. They did also provide some photos, uh, which I'll, uh, I'll bring up in just a moment. You can see a couple of, the, uh, of those photos uh, are on the site plan as well. So the exterior storage would be of equipment. And again, that list was provided to council uh, as well as above ground fuel tanks. So the tanks would uh, would be one uh, 25,000 liter uh, above ground tank and two 500 liter above ground tanks um, that are used for used oil. And I do want to point out that the applicant um, confirmed that the uh, the fuel would be used exclusively for the company's equipment and not sold uh, to the general public. Now uh, there is a policy in the development plan that states that bulk fuel storage uh, are not to be placed within 100 meters of a provincial highway unless mitigative measures acceptable to the province uh, are incorporated. Uh, Manitoba Infrastructure um, did uh, supply comments after the report was completed, indicating that they do not object to the, uh, the proposal. Um, they did note that any fuel tanks within the highway control area will require permits and setback distances uh, will be term determined during the, uh, the permitting process. So our office is recommending a, a condition um, that's associated with um, Manitoba Infrastructure's uh, comments. I just also want to note that the West St. Paul Fire Department uh, was referred the application and indicated that they have no uh, concerns. 
Um, the ARM administration also noted that there are landscape and building design standards uh, in the existing development agreement on the property that would be applicable uh, in this case. Moving forward, here are some of the, uh, uh, the types of equipment uh, that would be stored in that rear compound area. And again, uh, that was uh, supplied by the applicant who also provided a list of, of all that equipment. The final note about development plan policy, uh, there is a policy that encourages commercial uses which require large sites, um, such as this uh, proposed use, to be grouped and located on sites zoned for highway commercial use. And again, this property is zoned uh, commercial highway. Uh, this is what the, the property looks like as of this week. Uh, the buildings you can see are on the adjacent property. So uh, this is undeveloped, uh, it is vacant. Uh, at the moment, and of course, uh, the site plan shows uh, what the applicant is, is proposing. Also, um, uh, the RM requested that uh, these photos be included um, and uh, provided by council. Again, the photos were provided by the RM, um, and I'm including them at the request. Um, they are of a, uh, a property at uh, 2024 Springfield Road, which uh, I understand is. by the same company. Again, if, uh, if council has any questions regarding these, I would recommend um, directing them to, uh, to administration. The council will approve the uh, requested conditional use. Our office recommends the following conditions. First, that conditional use approval is limited to allow exterior storage of equipment as well as above ground fuel tanks associated with the contractor's establishment as proposed. Any changes will require new conditional use approval. Second, that the applicant is to obtain all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to those from the RM, RRPD, and Manitoba infrastructure. Third, that the applicant uh, submits a written confirmation from Manitoba infrastructure that they have no concerns with the proposed fuel storage, or that they are satisfied with any mitigative measures uh, proposed by the applicant. And fourth and finally, that any outdoor storage of vehicles, equipment, or materials associated with the business must be in compliance with section 3.11 of the Arm of West St. Paul zoning bylaw, including being enclosed on all sides with a six to eight foot high solid slash opaque uh, wall or fence. That's all I have for this application. And of course, we welcome uh, any questions. Thank you for the planner. I'll we'll go around the table. Councillor Link, any questions for the planner? No questions for the planner. Thank you. Councillor Bersetti, any questions for the planner? No, nothing for the planner. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for the planner? Um, to the planner, why would this not be considered a M2 or M1 use? So in the uh, in your zoning bylaw, uh, contract with establishment is a permitted use in the CH commercial highway zone, provided that it's enclosed within a building. Any exterior storage is what requires uh, conditional use approval. Um, industrial zones, of course, contract with establishments are also permitted. Um, but uh, again, uh, the applicant under the current zoning uh, is, uh, of course, permitted to bring uh, to apply for this conditional use application to allow for the uh, the outdoor storage. So what you're saying is because of the excessive storage that they're proposing, which I see on the other pictures, um, this wouldn't fall into the commercial use other than if we give it a CU. Is that right? Yes. Um, so uh, again, the contract establishment enclosed within a building is, is permitted. Right. Um, so, uh, no conditional use is required, but um, because the applicant's proposing exterior storage of any kind, doesn't matter the amount, any any sort of exterior storage associated with a contract with establishment requires conditional use. Okay. Uh, I'm also looked at when you showed the picture of the property, um, it didn't look as wide as what is being proposed. So I am looking at the width of the drawing, like I'm looking at the drawing, you've got um, two different buildings, it looks like to me. And can you show the picture again of the property itself? Okay, and so how far does that, does the property go right up against the next building? 
and then is it like a double lot? I don't have the um, the location of the existing uh, uh, adjacent buildings. Um, because the, the normal lots are a little bit more narrow. Um, so I'm thinking that this, because of the width of the picture and the width of the building that you're, that's being proposed, it looks to me like uh, it's a, it, it must be a double lot or a fairly wide lot, maybe because it's that pie shape, I guess, eh? Yeah. Yeah, so it's probably the best view of it. So yeah, the frontage is certainly greater than, um, uh, yeah. than other, uh, other properties, yeah. Okay, yeah, I see that now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Councillor Craig, any questions for the planner? No questions at this time for the planner. I just have one question, and it might be to Ms. Elias or our CAO regarding uh, their current location. Are they currently located in an industrial park? Ms. Yes, Elias or, or to the CAO? Yep. I believe they are located currently in a uh, an industrial area. Thank you. I have no no further questions for the planner as well. And uh, Ms. Elias, have we got the applicant online? I believe so, Madam Mayor. We have Richard Chang available. He's the architect on this project. Hello, Mayor. Hello, everyone. Council. Uh, it's Richard here, uh, the architect. Uh, I do want to quickly point out that my client is uh, intending to keep their property on um, Springfield Road there, what you saw, as um, uh, additional storage space. So any equipment that's stored long term that aren't being used on a daily basis are going to be stored there. As, as you can see, that, that site is more appropriate for uh, messier, quote unquote, items that are somewhat more unsightly. Uh, they intend to store uh, frequently used equipment uh, uh, at this particular site in their new building. Uh, it's gonna be their uh, corp like their head office basically, uh, where they'll have all their staff located in West St. Paul. Thank you. Is there anything further that you're wanting to add um, than what the planner uh, mentioned in describing the application? Otherwise, I'll go around council and see if there are any questions for you, Richard. I do not have anything else to add. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So we'll go around the table. Councillor Bruschetti, any questions for the applicant? Yeah, it's well, it's the architect, so it's not going to re really be able to answer some of these, but the the basic equipment that they're going to use all the time i guess are the big drilling rigs that kind of stuff which with a residential properties possibly coming up behind that equipment would be running a lot of the times in the winter warming them up at early hours that kind of stuff and it, I just don't know how it's going to fit. Like it, it's it's big equipment, and I think it should be more in an industrial zone. Just more of a comment because I won't be able to really get the answer if I wanted there. So, right. Um, what we can propose is uh, additional landscaping. Um, we we've shown abundance of landscaping in the front, and I um, you know understood the the concerns of waterside. Um, you know we have a fence in the back and all around the entire compound uh, but we would be open to to landscaping that uh, the rear setback there yeah I, I think council needs to work on better definitions of this contractor's establishment because for the planning to say that it does fit but it needs this I, I think this some of this is going a little past the line of acceptable so So just, thank you. just to clarify, thank, thank you, Councillor Jetty. Maybe just to clarify with the planner. So the conditional use is just for the exterior storage, not the contractor's establishment portion, because that could possibly be all within a building. Regardless of Council's decision tonight, uh, a contractor's establishment entirely enclosed with a, within a building is a permitted use on this property. Thank you. 
Councillor Kleiber, any questions for the architect on behalf of the applicant? Well, I, I commend the architect. It looks like a very nice building. Um, certainly fits into the um, existing area. Um, I would have to echo uh, the sentiments of my fellow councillor. Uh, I know Maple Leaf drilling and I know there's going to be a lot of equipment on that site and I don't think that that fits into the surrounding area. So that's my concern there. If you want to put the office building up, that's great, but the equipment is just too much for that. I know there's space, but it's too much for the use of the area. I would say that this building, being a beautiful building that it is, um, if you're going to have that much outdoor storage, you should be in our industrial park. And uh, I would, I don't know if you've purchased the land yet or not, but I would encourage you to, that's really where you need to be. And that's, um, that's all I've got to say. Councillor Kleiber. Is there an, if you're, you're able to um, follow up if you're wanting Richard, otherwise I'll go on. Sure, sure. I can quickly follow up that they, they have purchased this property and they are the owners. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Craig, you. any questions for the architect? Well, I concur with both of um, my fellow councillors. I'm worried about the noise pollution that's going to happen. There's a residential property is going at the back there on the same water side. And I'm very concerned about that. You know, diesel, I'm not a mechanic, but I know you have to run diesel all hours of the night. We have problems with semi trucks here. And I'm putting that into perspective here. You know, the noise pollution for those people who's going to live at the back there. I have no concerns about the building. The building looks beautiful. It's just about these heavy equipment in there. And as they said, the best fit for this place is the industrial park, an industrial park where it should go. And that's my comments. Thank you, Councillor Preg. Councillor Link, any questions, comments? Same as the previous three councillors. Um, the storage outdoor for the number of trucks and the size of the trucks and the fact that they're drilling rigs, diesels. Um, I I don't know how they can mitigate the noise and 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 also the potential problems perhaps with the above ground storage of oil. I'm assuming that the oil is used to lubricate on jobs, their drilling equipment, so that some transfer of that material is probably going to happen on a regular basis. I'm concerned about spillage. I see that they have a lot of spillage control in their list of equipment. However, um this these are hazardous materials and this is a residential area uh behind i'm sure there's environmental um controls i'm sure that uh conservation it, uh, has to be monitoring what's going on in an establishment like this i'd like to know if the architect can comment on how the company would ensure protection for the nearby residents the community um, that's zoned multifamily and residential and also for the nearby businesses because to me this is a much bigger establishment um, than the neighbors <clears throat> I don't even know if it fits in there anyway could you comment on the protection for the nearby residential community uh, the mitigation measures you would use for noise and for spillage and so on and so forth. Thank you, Councillor Lee. For sure. I think I'll let you go ahead. Okay, for sure. Thank you everyone for your comments and concerns. Um, you know, safety is of course our number one priority and as architects, you know, we, we will definitely review uh, all the building codes and applicable environmental codes with the with respect to the uh, above ground oil storage tanks 
you know, we know that there are environmental considerations. Uh, oil storage tanks, you know, typically they're in double walled uh, containers, uh, you know, that are intended to keep the surroundings safe. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as uh, planner um, David had mentioned, uh, the oil is used for the fleet equipment only. It's not for passenger vehicles or anything like that. Um, so it is uh, like a definitely controlled environment is located behind the gate. So, uh, you know, we'll have behind the security gate, I mean, so, uh, you know, measures will be taken so that uh, people don't couldn't break in and, and, and kind of, you know, do malicious things with, with the oil there. Um, in terms of the noise, um, I mean, seeing that where we are, uh, the, the location of the site, uh, much of the exposure by my, my quick estimations, you know, uh, the, the rear lot line is relatively small and that's the rear, rear lot line is going to be butting up against the residential development. So the exposure to the development in behind to the north is actually quite minimal. It's more so exposed to the other commercial highway properties uh, to the east and west. Um, so having said that, uh, you know, I think with additional landscaping measures and, and the uh, opaque fences, we can um, try to, try to um, mitigate any disturbances to the uh, residential properties in behind. Um, I know they said the fuel was dedicated to the vehicles on site. They didn't say what the oil was used for. Are you able to say? Yes. So we have two used oil tanks. Uh, and from my understanding is that uh, as um, the vehicles need to be serviced in, inside that garage. So um, those used oil tanks will be used to collect any oil that comes from that, from the servicing of their equipment. So that oil isn't put to use while you're drilling? No, on as far as I know, I don't, I don't think so. Any other questions, Councillor Link? No, just reiterate that uh, I, I share my fellow councillors comments previously made. Thank you. Councillor Petty, you had your hand up. Go ahead. You're bringing up the the site, like the visible issues here. But how are you going to be dealing with fumes, the smell of diesel trucks running? You know, you get a southwest wind, southeast wind that, and it, it's going to be blowing right into a re proposed residential area, and probably for many hours. Like we have long winters, and the stuff's going to be running and just wondered if there was anything you were going to do with that. That is something that uh, we can definitely look into uh, any mitigation um, for, for fumes and stuff. Um, I, I don't have anything on the top of my head right now, though. Thank you. I have a couple of questions and, and more comments. I, I share the concerns of, uh, of the councillors and, and the concerns they've raised this evening. I noticed in the, in the letter um, by the owner here, the general manager, sorry, um, that 95% of the drill rigs, uh, large hauling vehicles will be moved to this location. So I, I, I'm concerned and in looking at the pictures, I, I know nothing about drilling rigs um, and I can see that they're more compact from the pictures than, than what I imagine them to be. But those, I, I guess, would have to be moved to locations up on larger vehicles and then hauled down capitalists to, your, to the excavation site. Is that correct, that these drilling rigs are hauled off on larger trucks? That's, that's correct. And inside our uh, five-bay garage there, um, we, there's a big crane uh, that basically cranes the uh, the drilling equipment onto flatbed trucks, and then the trucks drive away. Okay. 
I, I have to say, and again, limited knowledge on the weight and size of these, but I have concerns about our, our municipal road in handling that kind of traffic. The, the intent of the highway commercial zone here was to have a, a commercial and not so much uh, the industrial uses on this. There's going to be a private school on this road, our recreation centers on this road. So I, I was just concerned about the weight of the vehicle and the types of vehicles that are on this road um, and whether or not it is compatible with the other businesses in the area and the other uses. I'm not sure and, and probably, you know, and I won't just say this because you're the architect, uh, the pictures that we have in here of the building are gorgeous. Um, this is clearly a, a well-planned building and it is a gorgeous uh, <laughs> building that, that you've designed. Um, so, you know, that's something that we would welcome in West St. Paul. The concern I have is is the exterior storage that is part of this application. And, you know, the, the intent of it was to have a, a commercial zone with higher standards and you can see the um, landscaping and and this council is trying to pressure um, nicely businesses in the area to be cleaning it up. Uh, and we've defeated a number of exterior storage requests um, for much less than drill rigs for asking people to move vehicles um, from in behind their buildings. So it's the exterior storage that's a concern for me, as, as council mentioned as well. You're, the building looks gorgeous. It, it's just having all of those vehicles outside and for me having them on our, our road is concerning to me. But I thank you for, for making yourself available to answer questions to council. If there are no further questions, I'm going to ask Ms. Elias if we have uh, people registered in support, opposition, and for information on this application. Yes, Madam Mayor, we have Kurt Van Wing uh, registered for the application. I'm not sure if he was able to attend the meeting. Madam Mayor, you're still on mute. Thank you. I'm not seeing anybody speak up, so I'll have you go ahead, Ms. Elias, then. We also have Ben McGilvery registered for information, and we have Waterside Development Corporation registered against. They submitted the same letter that was read at the last application, and I can reread that if you wish. Sure. Um, so in the, the letter that was submitted, um, it states that this area was developed for office and small warehouse use with building form and material guidelines as mentioned in Schedule G of the development agreement, allowing storage containers and an auto, automobile service station, again, that's um, regarding an upcoming application, uh, would have a negative impact on the current and future business. We have received multiple hearing files on multiple lots in this area. It seems that once an owner puts one container, it very quickly leads to three or four or even more. Having these lots filled with storage containers should not be allowed. With a new church and new residential subdivision starting, this is not a good fit for the area, creating a complete eyesore for the entire area. Currently, is it, a ple it is a pleasure to drive on Capulus and see the well-constructed buildings and well-kept landscaped properties. We hope that by approve, sorry, by not approving these application, conditional use applications, the continued growth in the area will maintain the same standards. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Elias. Um, Richard, is there anything that you're wanting to add um, to the comments made in terms of opposition? Um, I, I guess in terms of um the the buildings and and how it's situated uh i mentioned that it's i think someone's not on mute um <laughs> that that uh you know we're, we're trying really hard to uh, mitigate the uh, uh inconveniences posed by by the outdoor storage and we're committed to, to mitigating that as much as we can can anyone hear me here Who's yes? Yeah, this this is Kurt uh, Kurt Van Linge putting in the application. Uh, I've been on the phone here, but it wouldn't let me talk. Uh, I couldn't unmute for some reason. 
I know, no, we're sorry about that. And we've got challenges with the technology tonight. Welcome to the meeting. We have your letter here as part of the application. And uh, go ahead, you can speak to council. Um, it sounds like the biggest concern is the outdoor storage. And I just want to maybe mention a few things for you guys. Um, consider this site is, is about 50 meters from the busiest highway in Winnipeg. The vehicles that are there are not going to be run at a high level like they would on the highway just across the street. These vehicles, anything that's in the yard will just be an idle and the vehicle will be getting service done in the garage. Um, currently our workload is 75% uh, uh, plus out of, out of Winnipeg. Uh, currently we got uh, around 13 drilling crews uh, with five of them in the Sudbury area. Uh, a couple in Saskatchewan, a couple in northern Manitoba, central Manitoba, and a few in southern Manitoba. So I don't think it's fair to say these vehicles will be running in the yard all the time. And I don't think it's fair to say that uh, the vehicles will be more of a nuisance than what is just across the street in the busiest highway in Winnipeg. So I think that has to be considered with decision making on the outdoor storage. I, pre I appreciate your follow up comments. Uh, is there anything else that you're wanting to add based on what you heard from Council? Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. The Thank oil is not used for drilling rigs. I can I can definitely tell uh, Councillor Link that the oil or the oil is not used in the drilling process. I mean, the oil would just be uh, used oil that would be stored for maintenance uh, during maintenance, and then it would be pumped out by approved contractor. Thank you for the clarification on that. I'm going to go around the council table and see if there are questions for you, Councillor Bichetti. Any follow-up questions? Just more of a comment to to one of the comments that was said. I understand it's right by the perimeter highway, but those vehicles are moving. Well, this equipment will be sitting at idle. The fumes are still stationary and going to be, I guess, blown into that area. So like trying to mitigate sound levels, that kind of stuff is can be worked on, but it's trying to mitigate the smell and I think I'm getting my point across there, but that, that's what I'm trying to get at is more that kind of nuisance to the area. And that's not what we were looking at for this area as the developer that previously put this area together explained in his letter the kind of stuff that he was looking at for that area. That's it. Thanks. Our fleet is similar to the Joe Jansen construction fleet just uh, west of the property where our equipment is a little bit on the smaller side, but similar to that. Also to the east side of us, the building directly beside us has a service garage performing maintenance to vehicles. Uh, that's currently there. Thank you for the follow-up. I'll, I'll keep going around. Councillor Link, any questions? No, I don't have any more questions, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Craig, any more questions? No questions. Thank you. And Councillor Kleiber, any questions? I don't have any questions, but I would ask the owner, um, given the, the size of your buildings and what you're proposing there, why didn't you go into our industrial area rather than the highway commercial? Was it just proximity to the highway that you were looking at? We were looking to put up a big, impressive-looking uh, building that we wanted good exposure at. Okay. Well, you have a big, impressive-looking building. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I guess my only comments or questions, um, it, it is a beautiful-looking planned building. 
Um, and, and I do wanna thank you for thinking of West St. Paul. Um, the concerns as you've heard council mention is that exterior storage. Um, so reading off of the letter that you submitted to council again, 95% of our drill rigs and, and hauling vehicles will be on this site. And, and I know you mentioned that you have a large crew and you're doing a booming business, which you know we commend you for. We wanna see businesses do well in Manitoba. Um, how many rigs would you anticipate in vehicles stored in behind your, your gorgeous building? Currently in Winnipeg right now, we have a few, uh, but obviously if say it's Christmas time or something, they would all come back to the facility, be stored there. And then once uh, we have uh, uh, work again, they would go out. So is it a lot of coming and going? Uh, like I'm trying to understand how many how many vehicles are gonna be stored in behind here, how many rigs? And then it sounds like with this being a lot of projects, this is a lot of coming and going. So our, our projects are not around Winnipeg. So our projects could be six months long in the middle of the bush somewhere. Um, so I think you're overthinking the coming and going, but I, I guess we didn't do a very good job explaining to you, but I don't believe that letter says we're storing 95% of our, so our, our fleet there. Uh, that's exactly what it said and you've signed it. So the letter says, we plan on storing 95% of our drill rigs slash large hauling vehicles and 15% of the remaining MPI fleet indoors inside the new building on Capolis. I'm just trying to get a sense of the numbers so that, that if, if this was something that was approved and I drove by, how many vehicles on a given day and, and, and equipment, drilling equipment, would I see on this lot? Yeah, you would see, you would see, there would not be a ton of vehicles uh, out of our fleet. It's hard to say, like if we're, if we've been busy for years, but if we're not busy, it's hard to say. But on average in Winnipeg right now, we'll have actual company vehicles in the range of 10. I would say less than what's down the street at the uh, Hydrovac contractor. Um, because like I said, our, our, our work is not done in Winnipeg. It is to an extent, but that's a small extent. Thank you, and I, and I do appreciate you answering our questions tonight. And uh, my concern is similar to that raised by other members of council. I, I feel that you, you would be perfect in our industrial business park, but I'm, I have concerns about the amount of storage in our commercial area here. Any other questions from council? Hearing and seeing none then, I will close the public hearing. Thank you for making yourself available and to Richard as well to answer our questions here tonight. Be it resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I get a mover please? Moved by Councillor Buschetti, seconded by Councillor Link. Any discussion, hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor, opposed, carried. I will read the resolution. Whereas the applicant has applied for conditional use 3820 to permit exterior storage as well as above ground fuel tanks associated with a contractor's establishment drilling contractor on the property located at 979 Capolis, lot 10, plan 57170 in the commercial highway zone. And whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representations for and or against the conditional use application. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul approve conditional use 3820 under the following conditions. One, that conditional use approval is limited to allow exterior storage of equipment as well as above ground fuel tanks associated with a contractor's establishment drilling contractor as proposed within this application. Any changes will require a new conditional use approval. Two, applicant owner to obtain all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to those from Red River Planning District, the RM of West St. Paul and Manitoba Infrastructure. Three, applicant owner to submit written confirmation from Manitoba Infrastructure that they have no concerns with the proposed fuel storage and or they are satisfied with the mitigative measures proposed by the applicant. 
And four, any outdoor storage of vehicles, equipment, or materials associated with the business must be in compliance with Section 3.1 of the RM of West St. Paul Zoning Bylaw, including being enclosed on all sides with a six to eight foot high solid opaque wall or fence. The approval of a conditional use will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of the decision. A board council or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection one for an additional period not longer than 12 months if an application is received before the initial deadline. Can I have a mover, please? And can I get a recorded vote too, please? Ms. Shaw, recorded vote. Um, mover, moved by Councillor Bachetti, seconded Councillor Link. Any further discussion on this item? Councillor yeah. Kleiber? Yeah, um, you know, the thing is on this application, while the building is a very nice building, and I certainly welcome Maple Leaf drilling to West St. Paul if they want to put up that office building, I have a couple of things I'd like to run by council. One, we've seen this extensive list of equipment, and I, and I mean, I just was looking at it again, and it's quite extensive, and there's a lot of large equipment there. Um, you know, one of the questions that I have is if we don't approve this, how do we enforce um, the bylaw zoning if it suddenly appears? And, uh, you know, I mean, we could go through this whole thing and let's say we say no to it and suddenly it all appears on the property. What are, what is our recourse at that point, Mr. Patton? Can you, can you tell me? So I, I can't go into details about the enforcement processes. Um, uh, only to say that that would be the matter would be dealt with by our bylaw enforcement officer. Um, what kind of um, uh, actions would be taken? Um, would it would be a, a question to uh, to consult with the bylaw enforcement officer directly with? So uh, the outdoor storage is mostly speaking to the larger equipment pieces. Is that right? So if the individual, like for example, we have large equipment too, but we also have a, a fleet of trucks. So he would under the commercial highway be allowed to have his trucks there though, right? Am I correct in that? Like if he had a half ton or a delivery truck or something. Typically our office is considered anything beyond, uh, let's say a typical passenger vehicle um, uh, that's associated with the with a business like a contractor's establishment to be outdoor storage. Um, so any of their equipment uh, that's uh, beyond, um, let's say, typical passenger vehicle or, or typical passenger uh, truck. Uh, well, anything would, past a half ton or three quarter ton? Is that what you're saying? Right. Okay. So he can still have his like half tons there. I noticed he's got a bunch of trucks there that are within that range. He doesn't need a conditional use for that though, does he? No, um, again, it's, it's uh, outdoor storage. It isn't um, defined in the, in the bylaw, but our offices have uh, been consistent with considering anything beyond a passenger vehicle uh, in terms of vehicle equipment that's kept inside to be exterior. Storage. So there could be equipment there, but he has to put it inside if he has, right? Correct. Okay, good to know, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. I would just like to follow up regarding the bylaw enforcement. Um, what we've been doing recently in terms of bylaw enforcement is we've been hauling vehicles away. So if, if this was declined and a bunch of vehicles showed up, we've been going on site and I believe last year we hauled away seven, seven vehicles um, you know, that were um, not in compliance um, and we've hauled away storage containers. So if this was not approved and, and oh, all this equipment showed up anyway, um, this would be followed up on and bylaw enforcement would follow up. There would be a certain amount of time to remove that, that equipment and move it. And then there'd be enforcement, which is towing away um, to uh, a storage facility and at the expense of the owner. So we, we are doing that now, we have done that. So I wouldn't want the applicant listening to us and thinking that we have no enforcement. Um, we called, towed away a lot of vehicles. Yeah, and I think too that he mentioned the neighboring property is repairing trucks, but that there was also conditional use where everything had to be done inside as well. And I recall that conditional use. So where we have allowed things, we've said it's got to be inside. And I think the same applies here, you know, put it inside. There's lots of bays here. There's lots of room. 
and, and I believe, I know there was a discussion about passenger vehicles. Um, this council limited one detailing business to having six passenger vehicles outside their business for exterior storage. And, and this council came down hard on a fellow that wanted to sit more than six vehicles parked outside for detail work. So um, I just wanna make sure that we're being fair in, in how we're addressing exterior storage. Thank you for your comments, Councillor Kleiber. Any other uh, comments regarding this application from council? Hearing and seeing none then, we had a request for a recorded vote. I will call for the question. All those in favor? And all those opposed? And that is defeated. All right, we are on to 5.5, .5, another conditional use uh, planning item. Be it resolved that this meeting of council recess for the purpose of holding a public hearing pursuant to section 105 of the Planning Act. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Prague, seconded by Councillor Bichetti. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That is carried. I will pass that back to you, Mr. Planner. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So, conditional use uh, number 41 of 2020 is to allow it, uh, outdoor storage as well as storage containers associated with the contractor's establishment at 1087 uh, Capitalist Drive. The, uh, the property in question is located on the east side of Capitalist Drive. It's about 1.7 acres in size, uh, and it's developed with a uh, with a commercial building. Uh, now, I just uh, pulled up the zoning map to point out that the um, there is residentially zoned undeveloped um, property uh, that's residentially zoned both to the east to the rear uh, of the lot, as is typical for these lots along Capitals. Uh, but there is also um, uh, residentially zoned uh, property directly to the south. Um, and the width of that would accommodate uh, uh, public road. Uh, again, um, that's uh, not, uh, there isn't anything planned for that um, area um, that's uh, been applied for at the moment, uh, but I did just want to uh, point out to council that, uh, that the uh, land to the east and south is, is residentially zoned. Uh, so the applicant um, has submitted a site plan, which shows a location of the four storage containers currently on the property. Um, these containers are used to store parts associated with the existing business. Uh, additionally, uh, the applicant has indicated that there is equipment such as street sweepers, uh, sewer flushers, hydro excavators, and refuse trucks, uh, as well as parts too large for the containers that are stored in the, uh, the back half of this property. Uh, now, there is an existing chain link fence around the rear and side yards of the property, uh, which the applicant is proposing to install privacy slats in uh, in order to comply with the zoning bylaw uh, requirements. Just a reminder to council, um, uh, the zoning bylaw requires that any exterior storage is enclosed on all sides by a six to eight foot high uh, opaque uh, or solid wall or fence. Uh, chain link is only permitted subject to entering into an agreement with the municipality. Um, there is also an existing development agreement, um, which uh, administration has indicated um, requires a landscaping plan to be approved by the municipality. Uh, this plan may need to be revised should the proposed outdoor storage and or storage containers prevent the approved plan from uh, being carried out. Uh, RM administration has also requested a condition of approval that would require the applicant to obtain a letter of clearance uh, in order to ensure that the property is in compliance with applicable uh, bylaws as well as the existing development agreement. Uh, since the uh, uh, report uh, the report was uh, prepared, Manitoba Infrastructure has indicated that they do not uh, object to the approval of storage containers on the property. Uh, I just will note that uh, at the time the application was referred to Manitoba Infrastructure, it was just for the storage containers. It wasn't uh, for the exterior storage, so uh, we only received their comments regarding the, uh, the storage containers. Um, just uh, several photos of the property as it exists today, showing the exterior storage and the and the containers that are subject to this application. So, uh, as you can see, the image on the top um, again that's that residentially zoned uh, property uh, that's directly to the uh, on the right side of, of the image there, um, uh, and you can also see some of the uh, storage containers uh, as well as the exterior storage in that in that rear compound. 
Uh, just moving on some additional photos taken from Capitol Strive of the uh, existing storage and containers on the property. Um, the top image is taken from, uh, uh, from the south um, uh, of the property and the uh, the image on the bottom is taken from the uh, the north side of the property. So again, there's an existing chain link fence, fence um, surrounding that compound uh, and there is existing uh, containers as well as exterior storage. Now, I just want to point out to council that uh, our office did um, issue an occupancy permit for a contractor's establishment on this property, uh, but there was a condition uh, that no exterior storage be permitted um, unless and until council approves a conditional use. Uh, and so this um, this application has come before you as a result of a uh, um, enforcement uh, action uh, by the uh, by law enforcement officer. As you can see, the uh, uh, there is exterior storage on the on the property already, despite uh, again that condition that was explicitly uh, listed on the occupancy permit. Should council approve the requested conditional use, we would recommend the following conditions. First, that a conditional use approval is limited to allow outdoor storage and storage containers associated with a contractor's establishment on the subject property as proposed within the application. Any changes will require new approval. Second, that the uh, applicant is to obtain all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to those from the RRPD, uh, Manitoba Infrastructure, and the RM. Third, that the applicant is to obtain a letter of clearance from the RM. And fourth, that the applicant submit a revised landscaping plan to the satisfaction of the RM, showing outdoor storage and fencing in compliance with section 3.11 of the zoning bylaw and the existing development agreement, if uh, required. And that's all I have for this uh, application, Madam Mayor, and would welcome any questions. Thank you, Mr. Planner. I'm going to go around the virtual council table here and see if there's any questions for you. Councillor Kleiber, any questions for the planner? Um, yeah, I get, I guess I do have a couple of questions. So, um, I understand that when this building went up, was there any, uh, discussion about the outdoor storage with Red River Planet? When they went to get their occupancy permit, I think there was, was there some discussion with you and with Red River Planning? So I wasn't involved um, with anything um, at that time. Uh, I believe the occupancy permit was issued. I uh, just wanna uh, double check the date in the report. Um, but in any case, it, it predates my uh, um, my employment with Red River Planning. So the, uh, um, the occupancy permit was issued in 2018. So I, I can't speak to what uh, what conversations exactly were had in regards to exterior storage, but I can um, uh, tell council that uh, that there there was some uh, um, correspondence in in the file uh, regarding exterior storage, and of course again um, directly on the occupancy permit when it was issued, it was noted that uh, exterior storage would not be permitted unless uh, conditional use approval was granted by council. So when we talk about exterior storage, we're talking about the trucks that are parked there at night, or are we talking about the sea cans? The exterior storage is specifically the equipment, um, uh, including the trucks that you can see in the, in the images here. Uh, the storage containers also require conditional use approval, but it's not, they're not technically uh, exterior storage. They'd be considered accessory structures. Okay. And, um, uh so any so what i clarified with you previously was that any business along that road any time that they're over that passenger vehicle or trucks or anything like that they have to apply for uh exterior storage if it's outside is that correct the uh, exterior storage requirement conditional use is only associated with certain types of businesses uh, for example a warehousing uses and uh, contractors establishment. Um, that's because they're specifically listed as conditional uses in the uh, in the commercial use table. If there are other types of businesses operating uh, that are permitted um, that have outdoor storage, they wouldn't necessarily need conditional use approval from council. Um, uh, they would need to comply with the zoning bylaw requirements um, 
pertaining to outdoor storage. But uh, if the business is not a warehousing um, use and it's not a contractor's establishment, uh, it's possible that uh, that outdoor storage would be permitted without requiring conditional use approval. Okay, so I want to further define this because in the application it says that these are rental and selling, like they're it's they're selling the vehicles. So they don't consider themselves a contractor's yard. They consider themselves like a truck sales lot. So does that fall under the conditional use as well? A, so this is something else that was uh, addressed at the time the occupancy permit was applied for. Uh, again, I wasn't involved directly in this discussions, but I am uh, aware that there was some uh, concern uh, or discussion around what the use would be classified as. Uh, heavy yeah. equipment sales service is not permitted in the, uh, the CH commercial highway zone. And so the applicant was required to um, submit some evidence that they that they are a contracting uh, business, that they are contracted um, uh, as defined in, in the bylaw. They did provide that, and so our office was able to issue an occupancy permit based on that. Okay, okay. So your understanding when you put that occupancy permit together was there wasn't going to be any of this outside. Is that what you, is that was the, the understanding when that occupancy permit went through? Yes, again, very explicitly on the occupancy permit itself, it states that uh, um, uh, exterior storage would not be permitted. And uh, perhaps I'll just read exactly uh, exactly what the occupancy permit stated. So uh, listed as a condition on the occupancy permit is no exterior storage permitted until such time as a conditional use is granted. Okay, so it was the the occupancy permit does recognize that this is a contractor's establishment or that it's sales, sales and service. It's, it's, the occupancy permit specifically lists the use as a contractor's establishment. Okay, all right, good, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Councillor Link, any questions for the planner? Just again, and it's, I think this has already been confirmed, but if if this uh, applicant had chosen a property in an M2 area, there would be no issues. Uh, is that accurate to say? I'm just going to consult quickly the industrial use table to ensure that uh, um, that contractor's establishment outdoor storage is permitted in an M2, uh, M2 zone um, without conditional use approval. Uh, again, M2 zoning permits a contractor's establishment with outdoor storage without uh, conditional use approval. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Link. Councillor Craig, any questions for the planner? I just want to get this straight. This is not a, a contractor's establishment, is it? Or it is? It is, as uh, um, as indicated by the applicant themselves when they applied for the uh, the occupancy permit. Uh, again, it was uh, it was classed as a uh, as a contractor's establishment based on information provided by uh, the applicant at that time. And how many containers, seat can containers are in there presently in that compound? Uh, there are four containers as shown on the uh, site plan before you now. That's all. Thank you, Councillor Bright. Councillor Bichetti, any questions to the planner? Yeah, just for some clarification. Uh, can you go back to the picture showing the fence in the compound? Okay, how tall are those fences that are up? That one's good. How tall is the fence right now in that area? I'll have to refer uh, to the applicant's site plan to see if they've indicated. Okay. Uh, I've been trying to look for it, but what I'm getting at is if it's a seven or eight foot fence, a lot of this stuff has doubled the height of that fence already. So just, just to clarify that, and then 
there was, is it this picture? Sorry, I'm, the screen's too high. The stacking on top of the sea cans, that's, that's something I would have never thought till right now, but something I think we should be putting in there if we're allowing the one, but we're not allowing any stacking above that for height restrictions. And that's it for me. Thank you, Councillor Buschetti. Is that something, Mr. Planner, that can be added, that nothing is nothing is stacked on top of CCANs if approved? Certainly. Thank you. So just, um, I, I think you've done a good job of explaining uh, the process. So just so that I'm understanding as well, this was on the permit that there is, it is not permitted to have any exterior storage outside. So when the permit was issued, the, the uh, business owner is fully aware. And you mentioned that they're not permitted any sales out of here. Can you explain that a little bit more? It's not that they're not permitted any sales. It's that the um, a business that would would be purely classified as a heavy equipment sales and, and service use uh, would would not be permitted. Um, so a contractor's establishment, which is how this business was classified, is is permitted. Um, Again, uh, based on information provided uh, by the applicant, that they uh, that they do perform uh, contracting duties. Um, but other other associated um, uh, aspects of the, of the use, I suppose, which could include sales, um, uh, could be permitted if they're if they're deemed to be uh, subservient, I guess you could say, uh, to the uh, principal use as a contractor's establishment. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. All right, Ms. Elias, have we got the applicant uh, available online with us this evening? Yes, Madam Mayor, we have Jason Hanna available. Yes, I'm here, thank you. Welcome, Mr. Hanna. Uh, you've heard the, um, the planner explain the application. Is there anything else that you would like to add for council to help us make this decision? Yeah, I guess a couple of clarifications. Number one, I wasn't under the assumption we couldn't have trucks back there. These, and second of all, I just want to state what we do. So we maintain uh, city fleets. Most uh, is the bulk of our business. We do sell equipment, but we maintain pretty much every fleet that's in Canada. So the city of Winnipeg, uh, actually your own fleet uh, of uh, West St. Paul, uh, all the refuse trucks you see in the city. So uh, Miller Waste, uh, GFL Waste, so we are a contract maintenance company. We do sell equipment as well, for sure. Um, we don't, most of the equipment that's in our yard is in and out in terms of uh, uh, maintenance. So they're in the shop, they're fixed and they're gone. Uh, they're not like running in and out constantly. Uh, there's times that we have uh, several pieces of equipment in there, like we do right now. And there's some, in the picture that you saw earlier, we have very few pieces of equipment in there. So. Uh, I guess what we're asking, we want to work with uh, whatever we need to do, whether that, I know we talk about fencing, different things like that. Uh, we just we just want to make sure that we're complying and doing what we're supposed to be doing. I think when we came into this building, we were kind of, we we're moving from another area of uh, of West St. Paul, uh, one of the areas you talked about earlier from 1201 Grasmere uh, to this location uh, under the assumption that we could operate like this with the permit that we thought we applied for, I think, or I thought we did. And, uh, and we just want to make sure everything's correct. Thank you, Mr. Hanna. I'm going to go around the council table sure. here and see if we have any questions for you. Councillor Link, any questions for Mr. Hanna? Yes. Considering that um, RMM, RMF1 multifamily residential dwellings and RS residential service single family dwellings are going to be built in close proximity to this property. Do you think your exterior storage as we see it here is appropriate? I, I think we could certainly clean it up. I, we've offered to do whatever we need to do with the fencing line. We, we want to uh, obviously maintain a clean yard and uh, the storage containers that we have there we would like to stack an order on one side of our building and uh, and paint them the color that matches our building. If the storage containers can't be there, then we would certainly be looking at something either to add on to that building 
or erect another structure and and uh, uh, obviously uh, with some uh, some grace and time to be able to do that. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm, I think you're on mute there. Thank you. Councillor Bichetti, any questions for Mr. Hanna? Just, yeah, if you can just answer, how tall is your fence now? Just You know like, what? I, I'd be lying to you if I told you I knew exactly what it was, <laughs> to be perfectly frank, but I would certainly have no problem at the office tomorrow getting back to you tomorrow and measure it physically if you'd like. And, no, just uh, maybe you can just answer like a tip. Okay, let's say a, a garbage truck. What's the rough? What's the rough height of that? I, I have no clue. So I'm I'm yeah, like I've well, stood beside yeah, him. I've driven beside him, but yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately, we maintain them and service them, and I don't know the exact height, sort of say. Okay. But uh, literally, I think that picture was taken a couple of days ago. I could certainly get you some height. We have uh, a few refuge trucks in the yard. Uh, this week and I could take a, a measurement of that and a shot and the height of our fence for sure. I just would hate to give you a number then and find out later I'm three feet off. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, no I, I understand. I, I can yeah. see it's roughly between six and eight feet the fence because that's what it's calling for. Them. Yeah, I think the fence is about eight. Uh, the the hydrovac equipment that, uh, that's there is probably the highest pieces of equipment we have, tallest. They're taller than the garbage trucks. Okay. And usually the, the refuse equipment's in and out in a day. The refuse equipment's never usually in our yard. The uh, the, the hydrovac trucks, most of the trucks you're seeing in the back, there are bear trucks. They're a lot shorter. They're city of Winnipeg trucks that actually we we're sending back there because there's too many of them brought to us that were just uh, remounting sanders on some of what we do with uh, your, your uh, municipality as well. And I, I get, totally get the, the, the secan situation i mean I, I as i see the area develop I'm, I'm probably part of the area for sure we've always been part of this area we certainly want to be uh, as compliant as we can and make it as uh, as uh, as beautiful as we can because we want to be there for a long period of time so we are certainly open to whatever uh in terms of stuff that you're you're willing to take we'd ask for some grace in that period to be able to construct something right now the secans just so you guys know our secans Almost all of them are store. Uh, what's in storage in them is uh, is uh, um, trying, uh, brushes for street sweepers, and the reason we don't have them outside is because they get uh, weather beaten and fall down in the wind and things like be uglier. So we keep them all in sea cans. We have been talking about putting another structure beside there with the landlord, and uh, are just deciding whether we want to add another bay on for storage or we want to have a separate different structure that matches the building but not the full size bay to put those in. Because they are, to be honest with you, they're inconvenient for us as well to to get to in winter and things as well. It just the, the problem is that we had so much storage there. We we, we supply uh, the brushes to uh, Thunder Bay through Saskatchewan, and we didn't want them laying around the yard, so we had to get something relatively quick that we could put them in that wouldn't uh, uh, weather beat them. Thank you, Thank you. Councillor Kleiber. Any any questions for the applicant? Well, I think uh, I have a couple of comments uh, that would probably pertain to the zoning of this and the way that your business fits in. Uh, mm -hmm. From the way you described it to me, um, it's <laughs> we have this problem with trucking terminals in our zoning, and we have only one definition, and that's trucking terminal, and that's it. And we had the problem with this before in another application because you're not a trucking terminal. What it no. sounds like to me is that you're servicing trucks and it doesn't fall under any of our categories. So you got lumped in with the contractor's yard. That's right. What exactly. Right. So they found a category for you and said, well, there you go. And, um, and I guess what you're telling me is that this stuff is coming and going. I've heard, I've heard that before. And when I look at your pictures that you've provided for us, the one that's on the screen now, and I go and look at your overhead, I, yeah. can see, I can see your lots almost like it's empty. And then yeah. when I look at this one, it's like completely full. So it's it's sort of a, it's hard to gauge what is really going on here. <laughs> yeah, but, and I, I can help you. I, I guess I can help you answer that a bit. Yeah. Like yeah. right now, right now it's a oh, winter's coming. Yeah. So 
a lot of people are bringing in their equipment for winterization. So oh, I see. So you're really with, busy. I'm sorry? You're really busy. Yeah, yeah. I uh, guess, thankfully. The, uh, uh, so, yeah, so a lot of it's winterization on the city of Winnipeg's equipment. Again, we have, we just actually got, I was, it was funny because I was walking to the shop today and one of your sander trucks is in there getting ready for winter. But the, um, the, 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 the sort of the perfect storm that happened with us this year is that we're remounting a bunch of city sanders. So it's kind of doubled up. And it's too bad you couldn't see the middle of that lot there because it's all bare trucks that we're going to be putting in that we're actually moving to our land uh, our landlords actually get using his space so we can get most of that out of there until we need it and bring it in and out but uh again it's it, our yard could have literally five units in it and then in a season change when yeah. for instance when sweeper season comes next spring you could drive by and there, there could be every city sweeper and every small town sweeper coming there to get uh ready for sweep season and uh, and none of the equipment's running, running outside. It's, I mean, we obviously open up at the regular business hours and the machines are driven into a shop and they're worked on in the shop. None of it's worked on in the backyard or run in the backyard. Uh, we, we can't really see it on there, but there's a actual right to almost where that sea can. I don't know what picture we're looking at here now, but yeah, right to where that sea can is. So again, it's hard to answer your question because if you, yeah, you, know, I, you know, I think, I think, I think contracting that's... business as well, so you know what the seasonal uh work is like so i think that that um to the planner again we're running across the situation where we don't really have a definition that fits into some of the uses that are going on both uh in the m1 which we had at uh, another application as you recall where we were truck terminal and then now this is lumped into a contractor's yard which in my opinion does not reflect a contractor's yard it re contra it reflects servicing so but it's truck servicing and it doesn't have its own category so that's another thing that we should and i and i mentioned this before we should be defining this in our bylaws that we have more of a breakdown um, um mr um i'm sorry mr hannah yeah. so um i guess the thing is that uh we've only approved two sea cans so for yeah. us uh, now approved four would be kind of unfair to other people <laughs> and we sort of want to be seen as just obviously um but you were talking about another ass accessory structure perhaps in the next year that could replace some of this yeah sorry uh, thanks Ms. Lager. Uh, i think that uh, two would be fair what i would ask is maybe some grace period we have the two full right now winter is coming it's going to be very difficult for us yeah. to move those um i understand your point i understand and as we as this area grows i'm starting to see it and, and just answer some comment on your point there i remember going into this and i'm not trying to slag anybody or any uh uh formula but it was very confusing to be honest to find out what we were and what was allowed what wasn't allowed and trying to explain our business and i'm not saying our business is cut and dry so it's very difficult to understand sometimes but we were trying to navigate that and it was it was challenging i gotta admit i didn't know what if we were right or if we were wrong and you know and, and maybe i should have done more reading into it or but when we were going through the process of the it was a rush to get it done so i i, I do appreciate what you're saying trust me so yeah. uh yeah i hope hopefully there is more clarity but going back to the sea cans Yes, we have absolutely uh, talked to our landlord and uh, and uh, and are working on different options for structures to to house our uh, 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 bigger pieces, but also our brooms. Right now, we don't personally like it like this. I would I, I would like to have two. I don't know how long it would take to get rid of the two, but first of all, two of the four, for yeah. sure. I'd be more than willing to uh, share what our plans are once we've actually uh, reviewed it fully with our landlord which has been very accommodating, thank goodness. So uh, we're looking at either, and like I said earlier, either, either him adding a bay, them adding a bay, or uh, a smaller structure there. We're, I guess, the, and not to go too deep on this, but he's trying to decide, hey, if we leave in five years or whatever the case is, what's the best case for him if he's putting up a structure there? Is it another bay or is it a, is it a smaller um, uh, garage facility or something to store in? So that's where we're at today. So okay. sure. Uh, Anyway, that's I think the way you've explained it, you've given me a good idea of what's really going on here, and uh, and it's um, I, I understand more that this is sort of in and out 
uh, vehicles that they're not there all yes. the time and that you're servicing uh, a number of municipalities as far as uh, some of those trucks are concerned. So I get what you're doing. Thank you very much for answering the questions. I appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Councillor Prey. Mr. Hanna. Yes, sir. Your, um, from what I'm gathering, it's labeled as a contractor's establishment, but it's not. You're just servicing vehicles. You're not servicing vehicles in there. And do all these vehicles have to come in at the same time? Can't you limit? I can take five today, five tomorrow. So it's not all coming in at the same time? Yes, normally we can. Uh, like I was explaining to Mrs. Fiber there, this particular situation, and, and again, I'll stress the seasons, it's usually spring and fall, where yes. machines have to be serviced for winter and everybody wants it done at once, just like everybody tried to put on their winter tires, I guess you could relate it to. Um, but yes, we do want to because usually it's the perimeter at best of our area. We usually have that whole space open around. There's usually, uh, again, the picture we're looking at right now is probably a normality for us. Uh, uh, and this is an abnormality for us right now going into to winter in terms, at, and to be honest with you, you didn't even uh, really see how many vehicles are actually in our area right now because there's probably eight to 10 bare trucks we got delivered yesterday that we're trying to move out to our landlord's yard. But yes, to answer your question in the simplest form, we do want to limit it just for our own purposes, to be perfectly yeah. frank. But uh, uh, in in the, I, I, in the in the season changes, it's very difficult to do that because people are bringing them in a, as soon as the first snow flies, boom, it's craziness. Um, so overall, yes, in the two seasons, challenging. I'm just being honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I'm glad you're up front. And uh, yeah. as you've listened to the past people asking for these she cans and we limit them to one and then one is sure and the stipulation that matches the color of the of the building puts alongside the building so it looks part of the building and then the other one you give them a, like you said maybe they put an extension of the building give you some time the brooms are in there leave if you could give a grace period of a year keep it in there the other container keep it clean and give him some chance you know so keep it in there because you can't move it out now and it give would him be a very chance. difficult yes <laughs> no no so I, I i i'm using my common sense so the one container we are allowing one container as you can see painted look nice not rusted out it looks like an ISO. No, this is what we want. The area is a nice looking area. We want to keep it that way. The other one, I'll ask my fellow counselors, give a little leniency on the other one. Give him time to move it. Give him a year like we give the other individual. And let's... You cut out there, Councillor Prague. Just your, so you mentioned leaving the one, leaving the one as permanent, and giving him a year on a second container. Are you able to hear me? Are you guys able to hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Oop! You're muted again there now. Working through this here. Any other uh, comments, questions for the applicant? I guess my, my concerns, and, and if you've participated and watched tonight's um, meeting, then you'll see how, how some of the other applications went. We've just turned down Maple Leaf for having equipment um, in the back. And his comments were that, um, that that equipment doesn't stay there, that that goes out to jobs and then it comes back and then it goes out again. So. You know that there is equipment stored back there we see the equipment stored back there and it's backing onto a residential neighborhood in terms of the future so i i know what you're saying and i can appreciate your comments about well it's just here for a while and then it leaves and then it comes back 
Um, but we've just talked to Maple Leaf and, and I know their equipment comes and goes as well, but it is stored outside, right? It definitely is, um, for yeah. sure. And I, I, it's, I think, I, don't, I, I try not, I, I understand where Maple Leaf's position is too, to be honest with you, I caught that one. Um, yeah. Our, ours really is an in and out uh, for, for maintenance purposes. We don't own any of that equipment. It's uh, owned by maybe one piece or two pieces sometimes when they come in to be delivered, but 95% of the equipment that comes in here is not ours. So it's it's, it's a municipality's equipment. But in terms of if I may, maybe I asked the planner, but I don't know that ownership matters so much as there's always equipment there. So if if truck A leaves and an, and a new truck that belongs to someone else comes there, it is still continuous exterior storage behind your building. Sure, I, I, I if, if, yeah, I understand if that's the point you're making. I was just saying my, my point was that it's not our equipment that's going out to work every day, coming back in your yard, running our equipment, making sure it's working, and we're contracting out that equipment. That's not our our, our business. So yeah, sure, I, I understand where you're coming from for sure. And, we, and again, we're open to. Uh, we don't want us to be a nice store. I mean, I mean, we we definitely want to to work with you guys as well. And I, I honestly, when we moved there, I had no idea residential was going on by us. Absolutely, didn't even dawn on me. I, we have twelve branches across the country that I'm in every every well before COVID every week. But uh, uh, I honestly didn't know what it was going to be. And I had now that I see it growing in that area, it's an it's an incredible area. Uh, we would be. Like if there's something we can do behind our line or whatever it is, we're we're certainly open to to whatever it is we can do to make it work. I guess you could say, or with that, to your satisfaction. Again, I think that the the starting process was the stumbling block for us, maybe, and didn't understand fully what the the whole area is going to be and where we fell and what. And and I'm not certainly not uh, putting anything on Mr. Patton, but the people that we were dealing with prior to this, when I was involved. Uh, which was a portion of myself and another person. It it, it was a it was a little challenging. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, we didn't we didn't understand a lot of it. it was, there was a lot of pieces that fell between. I'm certainly not making excuses, but we are there now, and uh, we certainly want to maintain ourselves in in this area. And uh, for sure, what 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 we'll follow what the guidelines and what we can do to uh, make it work, for lack of a better word. And, and just, you know, to be perfectly honest, it places council in a really difficult position because Mr. Patton is saying that you guys have an occupancy permit and that that occupancy permit was really clear about what you could and couldn't do. And now you've gone and done what the occupancy permit said that you couldn't. So you were advised ahead of time, hey, you can't have exterior storage here. And so it's laid out. So the problem is, and the application before you, you know that individual purchased land is wanting to do something and and store outside and and now he can't because it's not a permitted use right and and you heard earlier on an application where we actually put in the application that the individual could run their business but a condition is absolutely no exterior storage so i you know the last thing that we want to see is businesses leaving west st paul but i have to tell you that the reason this application is here tonight is because there have been multiple complaints down capitalists and you probably heard some of the other applicants tonight speak directly about your business to say hey how come i can't keep a few vehicles on my site when this guy down there has all that exterior storage and we've heard that repeatedly through a number of applications that how come i'm being denied but the guy at the end has a bunch of exterior storage all the time so we're just trying to create consistency and higher standards in this area and it puts us in a very difficult position i understand and i hope you appreciate where i'm coming from uh, and I'm certainly not trying to uh, put down the planning board either, but they knew exactly what, who we were and what we were talking about doing. And the, the, the um, definition of storage was not the same as we're talking about now. So, and again, I'm not, uh, this is going back three years from now or two and a half years from now. So when we we're talking to them. So uh, again, I mean, no matter what I say right now, it's not gonna sound right, but I mean, this is where we were. This is what we talked about. We knew what type of business we were. We were in Saint. We were in West Saint Paul already. We we were in. We we're just down the street from there, doing the exact same thing. So, yeah, I, I understand where your what your predicament is. We certainly want to make it work. We want to maintain our business there for sure. Now we, we spent time, money, and energy uh, to be there and and uh, support the obviously the local area, both from from all aspects. We're willing to work with it. Do we have to do to make it work? We're there. I don't know what else I can say. 
I, I certainly appreciate that. It just puts me in a tough spot of what do I tell the people we've refused, right? Um, because they said, hey, we're going to put up some trees and we're going to put up some fence. And so, you know, how do I tell, and, and maybe yourself, when people knock on your door from down Capitalist and they say, how come you got to keep all these vehicles out here? Well, they come and go, so I get to keep my exterior storage, right? It puts us in a really tough spot. Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. Well, one of the things I just wanted to bring up that we should remember as council is that Mr. Hanna was here before we approved residential behind there. So we we approved that residential. So maybe it's incumbent upon us not to hold that against him. Uh, he was there first, really. So we made the decision to put the residential there. Now, if Mr. Hanna wants to buffer or he wants to do something to mitigate that, I think that's a fair compromise on our part because in the end we're kind of responsible for that as well. And there, there are a number of other contractors on capitalists that I could mention by name. I'm not going to do it because uh, they would be happy with me if I did. But I know of other contractors down that street that also have service vehicles coming in and out every day and they have the same kind of yard and they have the same kind of storage in the back and I can see things and I know who they are and I know kind of thing they're running and they're allowed to stay and they're allowed to stay I don't know why and they haven't you know there's no complaints there either so you know when we look at the whole picture we have to look at this picture properly and I think the the thing that we have to keep in mind in this picture is again we don't have zoning to fit this business so we've lumped it into a into a category that is not the right category and now we're judging it on that category so we have to be fair i think with that as well and i really really honestly mr Patton, we have to go back to mr eno and we have to further define this whole trucking terminal business because that's what's causing us problems here too is is uh just not proper definitions that that's the concern that I'm having here as well. So um, the other thing is with Maple Leaf, they're gonna have that equipment there all the time. From what Mr. Hanna told me, he's not gonna have that equipment there all the time. He's gonna have that equipment in for servicing and it goes back out. If it comes back in because because there's damages, then he's gonna service it again. I think what we're looking at here is a service business. That's what we're really looking at not a contractor's yard. I think that is does not fit the definition at all. And uh, I don't know, I think that we, we have to be fair here. We've created a problem ourselves in the sense that he wasn't anticipating and maybe we weren't anticipating housing behind them. And maybe we should consider that for other people too. But he was there long before we, we zoned that stuff, so. I, I appreciate your comments, Councillor Kleiber, but I would have to disagree uh, in terms of this needing to be zoning clarification. Uh, we've got a, a council that's going hard on enforcement and wanted to enforce issues. And so this is a bylaw enforcement follow up that equipment is out there um, and, and others have complained in the area that there's equipment out there. And so we're following up on, on compliance on that. Um, yeah, and if Maple it was properly me, categorized, I would agree with you but I don't believe that it's properly categorized at all. And I think that was the problem with the occupancy permit to begin with, is they couldn't find a proper category, so they lumped it in another one. And that occupancy permit, I believe, went back and forth for quite a while. And so if the occupancy permit says no exterior storage. Can you speak to that, Mr. Hanna? Uh, definitely went back and forth. We actually asked for some help on it too. Um, it, 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 we, we explained fully what our business was and what we were going to be doing. Our, our uh, understanding after we talked to them I was of storage was uh, pieces of equipment or stock or, or uh, I don't want to say junk, but uh, tires and stuff laying around or whatever you want to classify it as, as storage. We weren't classifying our equipment that was coming in and out as storage. They get I, I, I define storage. I mean, uh, I understand. I've been listening on and off all night, and, and I understand what what some of uh, what 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 your understanding maybe is of storage. It wasn't the same understanding maybe I have of what is storage. I mean, storage is parking. Is storage 
but you know what I mean? I'm like, just gonna, I'll just interrupt you to have Mr. Patton answer that. And in terms of just reiterating what the permit said and what storage is. Mr. Patton, if you could clarify that for council. Certainly. So our office has interpreted storage to mean any um, any exterior storage of, of equipment, um, vehicles, like I said, anything above a, uh, a typical passenger vehicle, uh, any materials. So really, uh, it's a pretty encompassing term um, that would that would uh, be anything associated with the business uh, equipment, uh, materials, uh, vehicles that uh, anything over and above a typical passenger vehicle. So I, I think it seems like the intent is the size of the vehicles and not the fact that the vehicle is sitting out back for five minutes or five days or five weeks. It's the fact that those vehicles are out there and, and sitting there. Thank you for the, for the clarification. And just in terms of the occupancy permit, I'm wondering if you could read that again, that, that the applicant was notified in advance before opening this business that no exterior st storage was permitted. Certainly, um, just give me a moment here to uh, build the file. So, uh, condition listed on the occupancy permit was that no exterior storage permitted until such time as a conditional use is granted. Thank you. So I'm going to ask Ms. Elias if we have anybody registered in support opposition. Oh, go ahead, Councillor Craig. You. You're still on. Sorry. From what I'm gathering and listen to Mr. Han and so nothing was made clear. It's not clear what this establishment was. It was just lumped in there and they have been there. And I, from my, they've been there for a while. Let's work with them to get this thing rectified. What have to be corrected and work with them. They're there. and get the game plan working for them you know it's there already and if you can work and mr hannah is throwing his arms up saying he's willing to work with us am i correct mr hannah absolutely let's work together because it was not clear from the outbreak what this business should have been it was just lumped it, to my knowledge thank you councillor Greg. councillor link go ahead I would like to hear more from Mr. Hanna about uh, the grace period that he wishes and what kind of uh, corrections to the situation could happen during that grace period and how long a grace period would be necessary because this does need to be improved, I think, even if the problem exists for short periods of time when people uh, uh, want the same service at the time, things have to be scheduled. Um, there's some solutions that can be done, I think, to help clean it up and alleviate the problems. But we have to, I think we do have to see some improvements. That's fair game and I appreciate the comment. I think that uh, we would love to work with uh, with uh, with uh, West St. Paul. I think right now, and we're already in discussions um, to uh, rectify ourselves with the secans. Perhaps one we would like to keep if we could paint the same colors of our building, just because they're very easy to pick the long pole stuff in. We are looking at, like I mentioned, um, both an additional uh, bay or two to uh, be able to get rid of all the secans and any small pieces that are around there which is not many but at least it's in and out and it's clean and it looks appealing uh i don't know which one that's going to be so to answer your question as far as grace period i'd say uh under a year we would certainly would uh, give you a plan of, like again i'm working with our landlord as we speak to determine what uh is the best course of action for uh specifically them and then does it work for us in terms of cost so uh they're working well with us right now so we just have to determine which one of those are going to be in terms of fencing and covering the we, we've already uh said that we're willing to do uh, uh make sure that the fence is not see-through uh if we have to look at extending it up i, I don't know what it, which what, what it is that would uh, um 
help the situation, but we're certainly willing to do that. The back line that's now, I assume, residential or potentially residential, I have no problem working with you uh, with uh, on uh, what you recommend, whether it be a tree line or whether, I don't know. Um, that's something I look to uh, uh, to your uh, wisdom and say, hey, this is what we'd like to see. This looks better than that, rather than just a fence that's uh, uh, dressed up nice and you can't see through it. We'd rather see a few nice trees along the back. Okay. Uh, we're willing to look at that or we can put that in a proposal to you and see what you think um and then uh and respond back to us or is there somebody that we can work with to go you know what do, what do you guys recommend so I, I i have no problem starting off with the recommendation from our our side of the fence i'd ask for a little time now to get it done uh certainly the first one that would come for sure is the uh storage area uh secondly i would I mean, I, I honestly don't know what we would want to do landscaping wise, but I'd certainly like to get the fence one uh, solved so that we can do it in spring. I think winter is going to be is literally almost here. So, uh, but we'd certainly willing, we've looked at actually since this whole thing's come about, we've worked with our landlord as well. We're looking at different options for fence the, 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 that aren't ugly, that we want to make it look fairly nice and clean. So we can certainly propose that and that can be done shortly. And then uh, as far as the landscaping, we'd look to you, to be honest, if you're saying, look, there's gonna be potentially residential, there is gonna be residential behind you, let's plant uh, a row of X trees that, uh, that uh, over the next couple of years before residential actually gets in there, we'll literally hide and create a sound barrier, whatever it is that you uh, think is fair, we're open to that. I think we're open to be really anything that at this stage of the game, we're a business that's, uh, doing well here we want to continue to do well here in uh in, in in this municipality and looking to work with the council to make it work and i've been here for about 15 years already now councillor do you have any other questions or can i see if there's uh oh, oh, well just a comment we've got landscaping guidelines for this area don't we if they're if they're there that'd be great is it the only the only uh, one i don't i'm sorry ask, sorry, to sorry asking the 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 planner um Ms. elias did you not send guidelines a few weeks ago to all of council uh, council link um there are guidelines for this area there was a, a landscape plan that was submitted before the building permit was issued um uh, and that that would have to be complied with or revised you're talking about our landscape plan, sorry? Or... There, there was a landscape plan that was submitted prior to um, uh, the building permit being issued that showed a, a number of trees and shrubs. Yeah, there is in the front, then they just actually, they actually did make it because there's some stuff going beside us, but we just replanted them literally last week, uh, right in front of our yard, uh, five, four or five new evergreens in front along that uh, corner. The, I would say the uh, west, the southwest corner has all been redone and also on the far uh, southeast corner. I'm talking more along the lines of the back right now. The front, I think we've done, it's done. The, uh, and, and maybe- Mr. Hammond, I'm, I'm gonna have to stop you there because our meetings go until 10 o'clock. And so now um, I'm told we have to close the public hearing and reopen it. Ms. Ms. Shaw, is that correct? In order to extend our meeting until 10.30? No, correction, Madam Mayor, you'd like to adjourn this public hearing. Uh, you okay. may close it, but if once closed, you cannot reopen. Thank you. Good catch. So um, we're going to adjourn it, and then we have a resolution to extend the meeting to 1030, and then we have a vote to reopen it. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So we have, uh, I'm going to put forward a resolution then to adjourn the public hearing. Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Buschetti, seconded. Councillor Kleiber, any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, carried, thank you. And now we have, uh, can I put forward a resolution that we extend our meeting a half an hour to 10.30 as per our procedural bylaw? Can I get a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Buschetti, seconded by Councillor Prague. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, carried. Um, and now can I have a mover to reopen the uh, 
public hearing for this conditional use. Moved by Councillor Link, seconded by Councillor Prague. Any discussion, hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. We are back open. <laughs> got the formality worked out. Um, I'm going to ask Ms. Elias if you've got anybody registered in support, opposition, or for information on this application. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. We have John Garcia who registered for the application. Uh, we have Ben McGilvery registered for information. We have Michael Alberg who registered against. Uh, he provided the same statements as earlier that he was uh, against applications with CCAN containers this evening. Um, as well, we have Waterside Development Corporation listed as against. Uh, they submitted the same letter as the previous two conditional uses. And again, I can read that if you wish. Um, I think we're okay. Everybody's heard that. I don't know if there's anybody new on that hasn't heard me before that. Is there anybody wanting to speak? Sorry, Councillor Kleiber, go ahead. I'm wondering if the planner could just update us on the fencing on the back, because I noticed uh, the developer is supposed to put that wood fence all the way across where all of the all of his property is. Is that correct? Maybe the best person to ask is Miss Elias. Oh, Miss Elias, then whoever would like to answer it. Okay. I understand because we have we have that that wooden fence that we saw in some pictures that is partially been built but it hasn't fully been built yet so can you speak to that i can speak to that councillor cliver uh, there is a requirement for the developer of the residential side to extend the fencing along the back so i think that would mitigate a little bit there and um i think that would be a positive for this property um, I'm going to also say that there are other similar businesses like this that are down the street. There's the uh, one that we approve for um, vehicles being uh, trucks being serviced. We approved a car retail outlet, which has gone over the numbers of cars that we allow and it's been allowed. And, um, and of course, the detailing business. And then there's also another a couple of businesses that have lots of outdoor storage that have been allowed. So I think that from my perspective, Mayor Christian, I think you bring up some valid points. Um, but I also think that we kind of are in a catch 22 here because this was here before we zoned for, for residential. So I would like to see us work with this individual. If they want to put up an accessory storage to get rid of the sea cans. And if we allow the, you know, a temporary permit as per we just did for the stucco place. I think we, I think we need to re, we, re, uh, we need some better zoning just for some of these businesses. Uh, I can see from these pictures that there's a vast difference between pictures too. So one kind of makes them look like he's got all this stuff and then the other one, I don't see that much. So I think we have to be wise and fair about this. My just my thoughts. Thank you, Councillor Kleiber. Again, we're open to, to working with the the RM, and uh, again, we're here. We're we've been here. We've been in there for 15 years now, doing the same thing we're doing today as we did 15 years ago. Uh, uh, so we certainly want to work here. We want to be part of it. Uh, we like where we are. Uh, if we can do like again, if there's something that 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 uh, that we can do to to add to the area, we certainly would have no problem looking into it. Again, the sea cans thing, I'm fully cool with the uh, the the fence line. Uh, we would propose. We're actually looking at it now, but uh, propose a few things to uh, uh, whoever we need to propose it to, and to to see if we if that would uh, uh, help the situation. Um, and anything else that's, that we have in mind. Ultimately, we just want to run our business uh, and where we've been, so. Thank you, Mr. Hanna. If there's no further questions for Mr. Hanna specifically, I will close the public hearing and we can discuss as a council. Is there any other questions for Mr. Hanna? Seeing and hearing none then, I will thank you for being available to answer questions, Mr. Hanna. And I'm gonna read the resolution to close the public hearing and we can discuss further as a council. 
be resolved that council do hereby close the public hearing and resume the regular meeting of council. Can I have a mover, please? Move by Councillor Bruschetti, seconder, Councillor Craig. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. All right, before I go through and read the whole resolution, I know there were some comments made about, about storage and, and conditions. I think we'll just go around and see in terms of, of uh, conditions and, and what this looks like. Um, we have that it's a conditional use approval that's limited to outdoor storage uh, and storage containers. Is council wanting to see the same process as the last application and, and others previous to it? that one storage container can remain and one uh, for a year to uh, to be able to downsize and deal with that. Is council agreeable to having the exact same condition as everybody else on Capitalist has had regarding storage containers? Councillor Craig, go ahead. I think to be fair, they should be allowed that option. And in the meantime, they have a year for the other one. And we as council and administration can work with them to get the top to speed to, to our satisfaction for that surrounding area. I can give them that opportunity, work together with them, and be fair. Let's work what we did with the last one, the same stipulations. Thank you, Councillor Craig. Councillor Buschetti, go ahead. And um, just uh, and the painting of the one just to match the building so that they don't stand out just to be like Councillor Bragg was saying use the same stipulations but all the ones we we've done I, I've never seen this the stacking on top of the secan so like I, I wouldn't want to see that it just kind of throws it out of there makes it stand out thank you Councillor Link, are you agreeable to writing that condition number one the same as the other application? One container permanent, uh, one container temporary? Um, whatever's there could be temporary, um, as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, but the th I want to say that um, the thing that is significant for me uh, is the fact that this business was here prior to the residential development and before hearing what the other councillors have to say um, i'm glad that that was mentioned because i think it's very significant and i think it's uh, also i do think there's a problem with the zoning and that we need to consider or red river uh, uh, planning needs to consider uh, more about uh, better definitions for contractors establishments and truck services uh, as has already been mentioned i agree with that i think it's a good idea to give this business time as councillor Parag um, suggested that's all thank you thank you councillor link I think we did have another business that's been there three or four years that came before us at the last planning meeting, uh, Mr. Mahaychuk, that has been in there without occupancy for three or four years prior to any of that zoning in behind. And so we, we had very strict requirements and no exterior storage for that individual and were very strict requirements on that. So I, I know that there's been businesses that were there, but we have fairly gone down the line in terms of compliance. and. Maybe the planner can read one more time. What what does the occupancy permit say when the individual took out occupancy that there is no exterior storage permitted? Okay, well, I think we heard that link. I think I've heard it now three times. I, so I'm I not sure why there's so, so much confusion about it. No, I don't think there's any confusion about it. And Mr. Mahaychuk got a storage container as well, as I recall. So I think I think the thing is is that. The confusion is is the way that this has been categorized, and I've said that I think three times, so I'm not going to repeat it. But for my, I think I'm the last one you're going to ask anyway, so I'm just going to go with it. Um, and I agree with uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Councillor Link. Whatever is there, leave it temporary. Let them put up a building, and get it all in the building. That's kind of what I give them some time, as we did with Mr. Stucco let it be temporary until the building is built and then 
If you want to give them one permanent, that's up to you. But um, I like to see these things all in a all in a building. Put your parts in there, get it out of the way, be done with it. And and I think that's a better solution, in my opinion. Thank you, Councillor Kriber. So I've got Councillor Prague, Councillor Bichetti, and I will support the one outdoor storage container and one temporary container for 12 months with the same writing as the other individual has. So Mr. Planner, if you could put that writing for condition one. And, and then the rest of it um, in terms of the fencing uh, in the application, outdoor storage fencing and compliance is all listed here in the, uh, in the conditional use, which I will read. I will go through the resolution. Um, I guess just for my comments, uh, I have concerns about this. I think it was clear in the uh, in the uh, occupancy permit that was applied for about what could be stored out back. And I think it's concerning and we've had residents show concern uh, about wanting to make sure that there's proper zoning and proper storage. Um, so I, I just want to see fairness across all applications. We, we told Maple Leaf tonight and some others that we are absolutely not okay with exterior storage. We added that as a condition. And I think having one property on this, this street where they get special favors is a concern to me. We, we have been really clear about exterior storage. I'm gonna read the resolution and then we, we can take the vote. Whereas the applica applicant has applied for conditional use 4120 to permit exterior storage and storage containers associated with the contractor's establishment on the property located at 1087 Capitalist Lot 4, Plan 57, 170 on commercial highway zone, and whereas under the provisions of the Planning Act, a public hearing has been held to hear representations for and or against the conditional use application. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Rural Municipality of West St. Paul approves conditional use 4120 under the following conditions. Mr. Planner, can I have you read the new number one here regarding the containers? Uh, certainly, and I, I just added a condition number five, maybe that would, uh, um, that would speak to it. So the condition one could remain um, as is uh, with the condition number five that the storage number of storage containers on the property be reduced to one within one year. Um, if, if there was some, some additional um, wording in there that council would like to see, I can certainly add that. The sec and only a second one for 12 months. Can, can okay, you hear so the wording that, Mr. Patton, as the previous application in terms of facing it? and having that match. So Councillor uh, Pareg, myself and Bichetti said same wording exactly as the previous in terms of the storage container. That uh, wording uh, from the previous application was that the number of storage containers on the property be reduced to one within one year. Um, so uh, I can add additional things about, uh, about uh, if you want to see some of them removed sooner than that. Um, it could be that this number of storage containers on the property be reduced to two within X amount of time and reduced to one within one year, um, up to council uh, what they would like to see. Councillor Craig and Bichetti, is that what we're looking at in terms of the two two containers and then down to one? Is That's that what correct. we're talking about? Okay. Yeah, but what the planner is saying, there's four containers there. We have to give him time to move the other two. We can't tell him to go move the other two. We have to give him some time to move it. If I'm correct, am I interpreting that right, Mr. Patton? That's right. I'm just looking for a direction from council about when uh, the storage containers uh, need to be removed by. As written, the condition would require all three to be removed within a year. Uh, but if council wants to see several of them removed prior to that, that can certainly be added to the condition. Councilor Bichetti, you had your hand up. Go ahead. I'd say reduce it to two in six months and then down to one in the next, by, within 12 months. So it's giving them time to, to do it. Is council agreeable to that? I think Councilor Link had a comment there. Councilor Link, go ahead. I think it, it is only fair that it be the same as uh, as the planner said for the previous application they have a year to get it down to one i'm okay with that too with me i'm okay with that 
I'm okay with that as well. Then I will read the, uh, Mr. Planner, you said for me to leave in number one or number one is redundant with an added five or I, I leave number condition number one in there. No, I believe the, the first four conditions as written could remain and then uh, I've got uh, three additional conditions currently drafted. Okay. So I'll get through that and we'll get to the, uh, to the additional three. Conditional use approval is limited to allow outdoor storage and storage containers associated with the contractor's establishment on the subject property. As proposed within this application, any changes will require a new conditional use. Two, applicant owner to obtain all required permits and approvals, including but not limited to those from the River Planning District, Manitoba Infrastructure, and the Arm of West St. Paul. Applicant owner to obtain a letter of clearance for the Arm of West St. Paul to ensure that all that the property is in compliance with applicable RM bylaws and existing development agreement. And four, applicant owner to submit a revised landscaping plan to the satisfaction of the RM showing outdoor storage and fencing in compliance with section 311 of the zoning bylaw and existing development agreement if required and then the additional mr planner number five that the number of storage containers on the property be reduced to one within one year number six that no materials or equipment is to be placed or stacked on top of the storage containers and the storage containers themselves are not to be stacked and number seven that the storage container to remain permanently be painted to match the main building to the satisfaction of the CAO within one year. Um, if council wanted uh, any additional conditions uh, regarding the exterior storage, uh, could certainly draft those as well. Thank you, Mr. Planner. I'll read the rest of the um, resolution. The approval of a conditional use will expire and cease to have any effect if it is not acted upon within 12 months of the date of the decision. A board council or planning commission may extend the deadline under subsection one for an additional period no longer than 12 months if an applicable if an application is received before the initial deadline can i get a mover please can i get a recorded vote council. also so I request a recorded vote. seconded by councillor craig any further discussion yeah i would just say i'm going to reiterate my my uh, non-support for this i think we need to show fairness given the um applications and and the stringent restrictions that we've placed on other applications and businesses along capitalists um, i have concerns about fairness to make sure that we're consistent and that's those are my concerns and comments hearing and seeing no additional comments i will call for the question all those in favor opposed and that is carried. All right. We have two more planning items. I don't think we have time to go through uh, detailed on subdivision on 6.1. I'm going to jump us ahead to 6.2 so that our planner can take that back and finish that for a public hearing for the community to be able to comment on. So I'm jumping ahead to 6.1. 6.2, I'm sorry. And that is first reading of bylaw amendment BL 220-15P. Be it resolved that bylaw 2020-15P being a bylaw of the Royal Municipality of West St. Paul to amend the arm of West St. Paul zoning bylaw 299P by making various text amendments related to two family and multifamily dwellings permitted projections and temporary additional dwellings be ready first time. Can I get a mover please? Moved by Councillor Buschetti, seconded. Councillor Preg and Mr. Planner, before we then approve uh, first reading, I'll, I'll have you discuss this with us. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. So um, just to reiterate that uh, this is first reading. So there, uh, if council does give first reading, then there will be an additional opportunity to discuss it uh, and, and uh, uh, in a public hearing would be scheduled. Um, first reading approval would also allow our, our office to circulate the application to uh, government agencies for comment. So the purpose of first reading is really to get this on council's uh, uh, agenda, so to speak. Um, uh, but again, there will be opportunities for further discussion uh, as well as a public hearing scheduled um, if council uh, does give first reading. So I'm just gonna briefly uh, go through uh, sort of the intent and, and some of the specific amendments that would be proposed here. Uh, as uh, um, Madam Mayor noted, uh, it's uh, uh, various text amendments um, that are specifically related to two family and multiple family dwellings, permitted projections, and uh, temporary additional dwellings. 
uh, I've given a, a brief summary here. I'm not going to go through it in detail, but um, just to say that a lot of these amendments um, would sort of clear up some inconsistencies and some ambiguities uh, in the existing zoning bylaw. It would not substantially change um, what's permitted in certain zones, for example. Uh, it wouldn't uh, add uses um, uh, with the exception of um, uh, clarifying that two family dwellings are permitted in zones that are uh, currently permit multifamily dwellings. So um, the zoning bylaw right now lists uh, multiple family dwellings and the zones are permitted in. It does not specifically list two family dwellings. And so um, there's some ambiguity there um, uh, about where they're permitted and uh, these amendments would, would clarify that. Um, in terms of multiple family dwellings, there's also a number of amendments, again, that, that just would uh, sort of streamline um, the process uh, for applicants. Uh, it would clarify some of the requirements for um, the planning district uh, and anyone else enforcing by law. Um, and it would really um, uh, reduce the, the need um, for a lot of variances that would come to council. For example, right now in certain uh, multiple family dwelling uh, zones, um, something like a, a um, side by side, a two two family dwelling would be permitted, but um, the bylaw doesn't allow for zero foot side yards. So uh, right now, if someone wanted to build a two unit dwelling uh, with one unit on each lot, they would also need to come to council for side yard variances. Um, uh, that's a little redundant uh, because the two family dwellings permitted uh, already. Uh, or multiple family dwellings permitted already. So that's the example uh, of some of the type of things that these amendments would uh, would clarify. Just want to quickly mention specific to the RMF1 uh, zone. Um, as currently written, there's a corner side yard requirement that's less than the interior side yard requirement. That's uh, highly unusual. It's the only instance um, in the RM zoning bylaw where the corner side yard is less than the interior side yard requirement. Um, and so uh, part of these amendments would be uh, simply uh, um, reversing those, changing those so that the interior side yard requirement is less um, uh, than, the, uh, than the corner uh, side yard requirement. In terms of projections, again, there's some ambigu uh, ambiguities and, and um, things that aren't clear in the zoning bylaw. So um, these amendments would clarify a lot of that. Um, and then specific to temporary additional dwellings, it would allow for uh, different types of temporary foundations instead of just um, patent posts, which is uh, specified in the bylaw um, I'm currently. Um, so that's all I have for this application. Again, the purpose of first reading is just uh, to get council's consent to uh, prepare a more detailed planning report and circulate um, the application and schedule a public hearing. Planner. Any questions to the planner or um, we save our questions for the second reading? Councillor Link, go ahead. You heard first thing at uh, this meeting or close to it anyway, that Mr. Eno is working on um, making um, the zoning bylaws amongst our um, regional partners consistent. Why is there a rush to bring this to council separately? What our administration requested this apparently according to this report. Um, what prompted administration to ask for these changes? Is, this is because of developments that are coming up in the in the near future. Um, I, I don't think we're going to have enough time to discuss these uh, properly before we can take a vote also. Uh, so I can uh, answer some of those uh, questions. So in terms of the, uh, the new bylaw that Mr. Eno is preparing, um, there's no um, short-term timeline for when that will take place. So we don't really know when exactly that, that will be completed and, and passed. Um, so the, these amendments would, um, I guess, uh, address some more, some more of the pressing issues 
um, that uh, uh, that the bylaw has currently um, that um, it, it probably wouldn't be prudent to to wait until a, a more complete review of the bylaw is completed. Um, I think it's fair to say the impetus for these amendments is that um, the RMF one zone, um, although it was created in uh, in 2017 and and certain properties were then zoned RMF one. We're now um, seeing the first um, permanent applications for development in that zone. And uh, with those applications have, uh, um, have sort of revealed some of the inconsistencies uh, and challenges that uh, the developers are facing um, uh, when trying to develop in that zone. Again, um, a number of variances are being required uh, uh, and, it's, uh, and there's some inconsistencies and, and some Things that aren't clear in the bylaw for uh, uh, interpretation wise. So um, these amendments would uh, sort of again streamline the process for, for development. Um, it would clear up some of the uh, things that aren't currently clear in, in the zoning bylaw and uh, would allow for um, development uh, to, to happen um, uh, in that RMF1 zone that, that's currently not permitted or or that um, there are, are regulations that don't uh, don't seem to align with market uh, demands or, or really any any planning rationale. An example being that uh, the corner side yard that I mentioned earlier that's less than the interior side yard. Um, that's creating some uh, some challenges for for developers to try and comply with. So um, so that is why the uh, this amendment is coming forward at this time. Thank you, Mr. Planner. Councillor Wink raises a good question, and I would have to say that um, I know there's no report fully prepared for this because that doesn't take place until the second reading, but I would be looking for a very clear report outlining some errors and uh, miscommunication between when this was approved by a previous council, what has gone forward to land titles for developers, uh, and some of the challenges that is bringing this to council um, so I'd be, I would be looking for that in the report so council and our residents understand um, what's gone on here. And, and I know, it, you know it's hard to get into that in a first reading, but um, for myself and hearing what Councillor Link had said, I would be liking to see some very clear information about um, the intent of this when it was planned and what, what has happened here. Does that make sense? Certainly, and uh, I'm just making notes right now, but certainly that would be um, that would be the type of information that's included in, in a public hearing report. Great. Thank you. Councillor Link, go ahead. Or Councillor Kleiber, I'm sorry. Oh, you're mixing us up now. <laughs> 10 30. Uh, <laughs> 10 30. Um, so Mr. Patton, we had an email today from a resident who noticed something, and I just want to know if you could speak to that. And that, and you're, you've talked about a little bit, you've said in the RMF1 zone, the side yard has been re, is at four feet now, but originally it was eight feet. So the side yard corner and the side yard interior matched, but now it's dropped by four feet. Why, why did that happen? Um, so that would be to align um, with the uh, the requirement in the RS service residential zone. Um, in that zone, um, a lot of the bulk regulations, for example, the maximum permitted height uh, for buildings are, is the same. So um, it uh, made some sort of uh, uh, rational uh, sense to uh, to uh, make the side yard requirement in those two zones the same. So what you're saying is this is a side yard requirement that's between two houses, right? Is that correct? The side yard would be measured from the building wall to the property line. Right, so each building would have four feet on either side, right? From the original. Yeah. Yes. And that's, and that's the RS requirement, four feet from your property line and then four feet from the other property line. Correct. Um, Council, just letting everybody know it's it's ten thirty. We we're gonna have to we're gonna have to close it. But in terms of questions from residents, if they could be forwarded to the planner as he's preparing his report, well, and I, I, I'm in agreement with the questions from the resident. I think that yes. side part is too small. But the resident so will are, get an opportunity to pass it anyways, or it's only what? a first reading. So. It's only a first reading for the planner to be able to prepare a full report to council. 
and to the community. And then at second reading, it's a public hearing. So the, the public will be able to attend and comment on that. Okay, well, I'm gonna just say to Mr. Patton, I think that four feet is too small. <laughs> that's Agreed. My, that's my input, I, it's halfway, you're taking 50% of it off and that's a lot. I can see six feet, but not that much. That's just my input. And we're also beyond 1030. Yes, we are. All right, so I had a mover and a seconder on this. I don't know, I had comments to add to for the planner to be able to look into. I'm just gonna do it really quickly to be able to have for the second reading. Uh, we had a school go up in a residential zone. Mr. Patton, could you look into removing that from our, our zoning bylaws so that we don't have schools pop up in residential zones anymore? And the other issue that I had is the storage containers. Um, maybe it's something we put in our zoning bylaw that there is a limit of one storage container in commercial highway zones, and then we won't have these people spending money to apply to have one storage container. If the will of council is to permit one storage container, then permit it, and, and we don't have to have them keep opening up conditional uses and variances. Those are my only comments to Can we keep going even though it's after 1030? We can't. We can't. Uh, and I wanted to do checks. Uh, so we can't, we're not supposed to keep going, but I'd like our people to get paid. Um, we've got a mover and a seconder. I'm going to call for the question and we'll just quickly do checks if we can. Okay. Uh, mover, seconder, uh, any further discussion? We're running out of time. Uh, I'll call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. Mr. Patton, thank you for this evening and, and I look forward to your detailed report on this for the public hearing and for our residents to be able to comment as well. Uh, we're after 10.30, I'm gonna quickly go to the checks uh, so that we can do the checks. Be it resolved that vouchers 41391 to 4192 as I, listed in I total. I don't think we should keep going here because we're, we're past hey. our time. We can't legally do this. Hey. Um, I'll have a motion to adjourn then. We'll send out notice on a special meeting and we'll- Madam Mayor, fingers. Madam yes. Mayor, if I may, can council please provide direction to adjourn um, or to table the remaining public hearings and other matters to either a, a future date or, or to set a date, um, please. Can we set a date or we have to send that out then as a, a doodle to everybody? What is the earliest time and date that we can do that so that our staff could be paid and our, our payments made? We can do it tomorrow, I'm fine. Do you want Council to call me? A special meeting, um, if the requirements could be it. Um, you can do at any time with council uh, unanimously agreeing or standard practice would be 48 hours notice. Oh, okay. So today, can we do, we can't do without the planner though, uh, can we? For two items left? No, we can't, we can't keep going now. Well, let's table this. We can't keep going. We're past our 10.30, we'll table it and we'll have Lainey set something out and it might be, it might be Monday then. Yeah. Okay. If, if the planner can Madam attend. Mayor, yes? For planning uh, public hearings, you must set the date and time or it needs to be re-advertised. We can't set the date and time if we don't know what the planner can do. Oh, right. Sucks to re-advertise oh, for that. Planner. Planner's back. Thank you, Mr. Patton. What works for you for rescheduling these ones? Uh, it's it's Monday fourth. Uh, certainly, uh, my, uh, just looking at the next uh, date. Uh, that's after forty-eight hours. Uh, Monday evening could uh, could work. Uh, so can really? we go Monday at 4.30? Monday at 4.30. Okay. What time? What time, Mayor Christian? 4.30. 4.30? Is that going to work for Councilor Buschetti? I'll make it work. Okay. Thank you. So uh, can I get a mover and a seconder on, on moving those public hearings, planning items, and the rest of the agenda to 4.30 Monday? Moved by Councillor Buschetti, seconded by Councillor Craig. All those in favor? Can't see Councillor Craig. He had his hand up, okay. Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you, Mr. Planner.
I appreciate that. And I will have a resolution to adjourn the meeting. Can I get a move, please? Move by Councilor Bruschetti, seconded by Councilor Craig. Any discussion? Here I'm seeing none. Call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed, and that is carried. Thank you, Council, and thank you, Mr. Planner. We will see you guys Monday at uh, 4.30. Thank you. Thank you.